Welcome everyone. It's Sunday afternoon, and that can only mean one thing. It's time to play Dungeons and Dragons. You're watching the very first broadcast of Dice and Dungeons. We are a role-playing live stream set in the world of Astronor, which is a world that I created, and you'll learn more about it each week as we play. Yeah, our broadcasts will be sent out on Twitch live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Sunday, and then go up on YouTube and uh, most podcast programs shortly thereafter. I don't make this show alone, though. I do make it with my friends and my family, so let's meet them now. My name is David Schultz, and I play Dromar the Goblin Rogue, and I want to welcome you all to the first ever D&D show whose target audience is people over 70 and under 7, so welcome everybody. <laughs> it, there's a lot of poop jokes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, my name is David Wong. I am playing Nines the Tadaxi Bard, and I will also be making poop jokes. <laughs> my name is Nicole Bates, and I'm playing Soria Ansul, uh, Changeling Druid, and uh, I don't make that many poop jokes. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm playing Olset Relf, a Frobolg fighter, and I'm glad to know the demographic because then in a couple of months I'll be able to watch this show. <laughs> exactly. Until then, it's not allowed. <laughs> I, of course, am the dungeon mistress, Alexis, and I have to somehow roleplay all of their poop jokes. Now that we've got a chance difficult. to introduce ourselves to you all, uh, we do have a couple of announcements, so take it away, David Schultz. So we've got a couple of sponsors today that we'd like to thank. Our first sponsor is Calling All Knights. Charge into a world filled with crazy monsters and even crazier knights. Calling All Knights is a two to five player trick-taking card game for the whole family. Featuring over 60 unique knight characters and creatures, Calling All Knights is simple to learn and fun to master. Coming to Kickstarter at the end of March 2021, designed by Kyle Chud Bingham, featuring art by Michael Ryan. Brought to you by Cali Pigeon Games, stay up to date on facebook.com slash Games. Thank you very much for that sponsorship, Cali Pigeon Games. Um, if you guys haven't checked out that game yet, it looks really, really fun. Some of the teaser nights that they've put out are hilarious. My favorite's the Cheese Night. The Cheese Night the cheese killed night me. Really good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to playing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you, David Schultz, and thank you, Cali Pigeon Games, for bringing us that sponsorship. I'm talking about our other sponsor this week, our continuing sponsor, Geekified. Geekified is a tabletop gaming store out of Vinton, Iowa, that takes online orders for all your TTRPG needs. So, if you're thinking about getting the new Candlekeep Mysteries uh, book for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, so shiny, which I highly recommend, it's an amazing book for 5e players and DMs, filled to the brim with tons of new adventures, written by more than a dozen game designers, developers, and writers. You can pick it up at Geekified. We have a link that will be sent out in Twitch chat and on our YouTube descriptions, geekified.us forward slash discount forward slash Dyson Dungeons. That link will be posted in both of those places, like I said. Using the link will get you a 5% discount off of your first purchase, maybe this book, which they do have in stock as of uh, this morning. They had a few copies left. The collector's edition. This is a collector's edition. Uh, it's an embossed cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. But they always have um, tons of different things available for purchasing. Yeah, like I said, using that link will get you 5% discount off your first purchase. And buying things through the link helps support the show. So it's a great way to get yourself some supplies, maybe a new book, or give a gift to a friend and lend us a hand at the same time. So thank you, Geekified, for all the support. And thank you to anyone who uh, goes on that link and picks up some new supplies. I think that's the end of the sponsors this week. Thank you to all our sponsors. Yes, yeah. thank you. And seriously, you guys, this is so, so cool. This, this is an amazing book that uh, Wizards has put out, and it's absolutely worth every penny. Uh, if you have kind of a book collection, Nicole and I definitely have, like many longtime tabletop players, you kind of get a collection of books together. And uh, this looks amazing on your shelf. It's a nice eye-catching piece. But even if you can't get that, pick up the standard edition one because the adventures that are written in there are filled with new monsters, new items, and they're all part of the candle keep itself. It's super all simple. Both versions are on Geekified right now. Yep. So. Yep. So buy one of each. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> all right, everyone. 
engineers, let's roll. Hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Before we dive into this session, we need to catch all of you up on the journey so far. You see, our adventurers have been getting to know each other a little bit before this broadcast episode, and we have a short video to help summarize their exploits, so take a look. Welcome, Dungeoneer. Here is what you've missed so far. Our party meets in the city of Whitfeld. Their disparate paths merging, as paths often do in a tavern. They began to eat their meals and the sound of chaos emerged from outside. Rushing to the aid of the city, they joined in the ensuing battle, and after emerging victorious, the group spared the life of one of the bandits and tricked her into leading them back to their camp. When the party reached the camp, the tabaxi bard nines began fomenting unrest among the bandits after discovering some of them were living much more comfortably than others. The seeds of revolution planted, the party pushed the attack, hoping some bandits would turn to their side, and indeed, many did. Joining together, they took over the camp and released the bandits' prisoners. When they returned to Whitfeld, bandits secured and families saved, the party met Commander Soloth of the famed mercenary group the Company of Blades. He asked them to join the company, and our heroes took him up on the offer. Soloth then revealed reports of heavy bandit activity far to the north in the Fervent Wilds, and that two of the defected bandits were willing to lead them to the base and their leader, Coromanth. After several days' travel, our party, along with Commander Soloth, reached the main bandit base. They then infiltrated their operations, fought off a pair of ravenous bullets, mounted another revolution, and seized the base, freeing dozens of captives. However, their quarry Koromanth was not to be found, for he was deep in the nearby ancient dwarven ruins, and the party ventured into those dark tunnels to find him. After making their way through the dangerous halls and chambers of the ruins, our heroes came face to face with Koromanth, the well-dressed leader of these rogues. They quickly dispatched his guards and took him captive. And then, the purpose of these villains became clear. For in this a final chamber there was a large, ominous, crystalline relic of the ancient empire, one that Commander Soloth knew to be extremely dangerous. The group quickly left the ruins and organized a return to Whitfeld. Now safely back in the city, they were rewarded for their work, and reinforcements were sent to the base to secure the hazardous relic. The job finished. Commander Soloth told the party to meet him in the city of Nordfeld for more work, and arranged them passage with a merchant en route to that northern town. And that is where we join our heroes. So that's the story so far. We pick up with the party approaching the city of Nordfeld now, a bustling city in the north of Glindring. Glindring, once the center of the Cormarian Empire, finds itself significantly less relevant these days than it once was. Nordfeld, however, has felt little of these blows to Glendrangi and Ego, nestled in the wet forts of forests of the north, about ten days' travel from the capital, Drogmara. Nordfeld is home to many drow, most of whom spend their days sleeping and their nights awake. It is known as a place of hearty meals, boisterous parties, overflowing with warm meat, and unfaltering hospitality. So why don't give a, our players a second to introduce their characters. So, like I said, I'm Dromar, uh, the goblin rogue of the party. 
Dromar is, uh, as, as are most goblins, small in stature. He's about three foot two. Uh, not that small. Uh, <laughs> but you're uh, very furious uh, about it. <laughs> exactly. I'm very angry that everyone else is taller than me. Because of Fury of the Small. That's my explanation of how I use Fury of the Small. Uh, he is male. He has green skin. He's about 26 years old, weighs about 45 pounds, and has a short brownish red mohawk and goatee. Uh, he wears leather armor that's dyed black. It looks not super fancy, but it's uh, nicer than uh, the armor worn by most people that you would see walking around. But that's Dromar. Uh, and I am playing Nine, the Tabaxi Bard, which is a orange cat with black stripes. Uh, he is wearing a jacket, a blue jacket that clearly uh, has seen better days. Uh, he's wearing shorts that were clearly pants at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and a blue beret, because that's one thing he has coordinated <laughs> while dressed, not in any other way. And uh, is seen carrying a loot, uh, an ocarina, and a... Uh, rapier that uh, has also seen better days. Everything about him has seen better days. Not recently, though. <laughs> no, not recently. Uh, and I'm uh, Nicole Bates. I'm playing Soria and Sul, uh, the changeling druid. Now, right now, she doesn't actually look like a changeling because she's sort of undercover. But um, she uh, generally, when not posing as someone specifically, looks like a... Uh, an elven woman with, uh, you know, brown hair and green eyes. Pretty, tries to stay sort of under the radar. But when she is in her natural changeling form, she has sort of an ash gray skin with milky white uh, eyes and hair. Um, and she carries a sort of gnarled staff that she brought from uh, her fey mentor, Pandalia. And we have already been met with the tabaxi god who just tabaxi jumped god. up on... It's going to be a good the episode. Table. <laughs> we will uh, this show in uh, our basement, the three of us here at the table, and we have cats. Yep. They will definitely be on the show whether we or you like it or not. <laughs> um, so, you know it's allergic. Just one last little bit. She carries her spell component pouch at her waist, and she has, um, like most changelings, a small sort of prismatic spreckle, sprinkling around the edges of her hair. I'm Greg. I play Olset Ralph. Olset is a furbog. Um, he is about 44 years old, which is still quite youthful for a furbog. Um, stands a little over seven and a half feet tall um, <clears throat> and is quite strong, strength proportional to his height and weight. Um, I have a full head of luxurious gray hair, which, <laughs> <laughs> you know, play to role the fantasy. Uh, <laughs> a neatly tri a neatly trimmed beard and luxurious uh, eyebrows, uh, brown eyes, piercing brown eyes that pierce you. <laughs> like a sword. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a two-handed fighter, so I carry a long and a short sword and have uh, leather armor. And based on uh, the headshot picture we have of you, you smolder. <laughs> no, <It's>... Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not on fire. He's not smoldering. <laughs> Thank you, Zalit, though. <laughs> Introducing your characters so creatively. Something very important about my character, he is absolutely taller than Dromar. <laughs> now, Stab you in the butt, Nines! <laughs> back to the this setting. This reach. <laughs> the four of you find yourself, as we just saw in the recap video, traveling in the back of a cart, driven by a female drow merchant, whose name is Uliri, You've been traveling with her now for almost a month to cross the distance between the city of Whitfeld and the city of Nordfeld. It's um, a little bit more than half the length of the country. And she's been a pretty decent traveling companion for all of you up through this point. Nothing much has happened. It's been a fairly uneventful journey, but one filled with uh, nice soft beds and hardly any work during the day. As this, is, <laughs> this has been an almost uneventful journey. 
Yeah, we've had nice soft beds and hardly any work during the day. I did enjoy the soft beds. <laughs> you, Leary, I know we've talked about you in depth for a whole month now, but <laughs> why don't you just give us the, the hard and fast points to remind us all? We have terrible memories. <laughs> just pretend we don't know anything about you. You guys are the most wonderful players. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> well, um... I hope you guys have enjoyed the trip across the plains here. It's been nice having a traveling companion, now much less four of them. I usually travel alone, and it's, uh, it's a good reminder that company is pleasant. Not that anyone in the world needs the reminder that the company that you keep is pleasant. <laughs> you, you have met nines, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has met the nines. <laughs> And yet, she Everyone? says her company is pleasant. I'm just making sure she knows who you are, and I. <laughs> As you round the bend, the last of the trees, you enter a clearing filled with light. Before you is the city of Nordfeld. Its dark wooden structures mostly staying low to the ground, rarely going much higher than two, sometimes three stories. But the steeply pitched roofs that shoot up and away from all of the buildings make them stand out and much taller, adding usually a story's worth or more of height to them. And you also quickly notice that the city is peppered with several truly gargantuan trees measuring in the hundreds of feet tall, their branches so broad and leaves so wide that they shade most of the town from the sun. Have uh, any of you ever been to Nordfeld before? No. No, no I, I try to avoid it. The trees are way too tall. They just make me furious. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly lived in a swamp. Ah, I'm guessing somewhere in the uh, Fervent Wilds. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did, however, yeah. live in a wooded area, but the trees were not this big. Yeah, the trees I'm from here. Silcine, which is forested as well, but uh, also much smaller trees. But Everything's smaller where fantastic. you're from. <laughs> Not everything. We've, we've got trolls and all kinds of large creatures, and they just make me so angry. <laughs> no, they're fine. I've got lots of good friends that are bigger than me. <laughs> like Soria and Ulsa. <laughs> well, I am detecting hostility. Were you telling us something about the trees? I'm actually kind of interested. Well, no one knows exactly how old they are, you see. They are um, uh, older than anyone has been able to count. As long lived as we all are here in Glindring, well, at least the dwarves and the drow, um, they predate all of us. Even our grandparents don't remember them growing. They seem to be almost mm -hmm. eternal. But they provide the city with beautiful shade, yet seem to do very little to stop the... Um, almost non-stop rain that we have most days. But today is a sunny day, and it's uh, wonderful out here. If you have some time, I recommend that you uh, go for a swim in the lake, Lake Stumgren. Oh. You know what I like about this area? The muck. What? And the dampness. <laughs> she gestures to a very large lake, just on the south and west side of the city, and you see um, it's got some like sandy parts around it, to at least on the city side. The rest of it is a little bit more uh, marshy, reedy around the edges. And what was the name of the lake? Stumgren. Good luck spelling that, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it sounds. Yeah. Just like it sounds. Is there an umlaut? No, it does not. Oh. You know, it's one of seven umlauts. They are said to have curative power, but uh, I think it's mostly because it leaves your skin feeling soft. There's quite a few minerals in it, and although it doesn't taste good to most everyone, it uh, does do wonders for dried skin. Mm. Mm. Oh, this water does not taste good. I bet Jomar would like it. <laughs> Let me see. Jomar tastes it. Eh, it's all right. Tastes like Dasani. <laughs> <laughs> Sit, turn. Uh, one last thing. 
you may not know this about the city or its people, but most of its citizens are um, nocturnal. So please try to keep your voice down during the day and don't be put off by uh, what feels like a conspicuous lack of people. They're mostly sleeping. Many travelers have a hard time with this adjustment. Oh, thank you for telling us, Oviri. Oh, you're very welcome. I yes, wish that more people you. would visit. Well, we had come here um, on a mission for the Company of Blades. Can you tell us uh, who the contact will be for that? No, no. Uh, your Commander Sola, a very nice man, did not give me any details about the work that you were to do here, but he did tell me exactly what to take you to the Company House. Perfect. Ah, so yes. I shall drop you off there. They might have fritters. <laughs> At the very least, they should have information. You can't eat the information. That's true nines, very good. Unless it's written on paper. <laughs> you don't want to eat that. It tastes terrible. Good fiber, oh. though. <laughs> As you guys uh, make your way in the cart, through the winding path into the city, finally hitting the cobblestone streets of the proper town, now, Yuliri takes a few turns and twists down some side roads and drops you off at the company house for the Company of Blades. This house is pretty similar to the buildings around it, not standing out in any particular way, other than the logo of the Company of Blades on its front door. It is mostly wooden with the steep shake shingle roof that's so emblematic of the architecture of the town. If you um, stand outside for just a moment, you can smell the warm, fragrant aroma of apple fritters. Oh, gross. <laughs> Gromar will uh, put on his company cloak uh, and will head on into the company house. Yes. All right. And, and we'll all set will do that too. We should probably wear them going in. I've, I was already wearing it. Well. Okay. So stamp out. I want to wear my cloak. Yeah. You enter the house and see an individual dressed in clothes that are very familiar to you, indicating that he is the steward currently on duty for the company house, and he greets you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. May I have your names, please? I'm Dromar. I'm Nines. I'm sorry, huh? I'm also Ralph. Ah, yes. I was told to expect you. I was also told to have fritters ready and prepare to clean up a mess. So I am thankful to know that there are no stairs in the building, as I've heard we all have had problems with stairs in the past. Yes, stairs are some of our arch nemeses. Sori and I have a special trouble with those. There's so many of them. If, if I was to say my strength, I would say it's like a minus one. That would be mine as well, yes. That's very specific and also somehow odd. <laughs> anyway, where is Fritters? The steward gestures to a uh, uh, room just off of the much smaller than in Whitfeld main entry area, mm. and the door is just slightly ajar. In there you see uh, a small collection of tables, about four tables, and a little bay window and then a, a nicely appointed, but again, much smaller than Whitfeld's uh, array of different midday foods. Sort they of fit like all a, that in a jar? What? <laughs> you said it was a jar. Sure, it was a jar. I, <laughs> and inside was all that stuff. Yeah. This is what, what I thought. Heard. <laughs> are, are there any other company members inside, aside from the steward? You don't see any uh, currently having a meal so, not that you know of, but as you know, there are plenty of rooms in most of these company houses, and they could be out on a mission, they could be sleeping, you're not sure. Well, Nyes is hungry, and he's going to say, like, go into that room and take a handful of fritters. Use the tongs, Nines. don't be rude. Well, I've watched hands. I don't believe you. <laughs> you have paws, not hands. <laughs> yes, I don't know whose 
times I washed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Having flashback to the MacGruber movie. Right well, now. well, they're having what I assume is going to be some sort of fritter fight. I will go up to the steward. <laughs> um, I had some questions about this town, actually. Yes. Um, it seems like a pretty big town. Nordfeld is a sizable city, yes, if not the largest. I'm wondering if you have a uh, library around here? I'm sure there is a public library of some sort, although um, nothing that's been, uh, shall we say, properly supported by any particular uh, college or institution. Um, do you know where I might find something about some place to get information on heraldry? On heraldry? Yes. Hmm. I can't say that would have that offhand. However, there is a contact at City Hall who tends to know most everybody in town. That she uh, won't be on for a while. You see, she is the evening attendant, which would be more like the daytime attendant for most other places. Her name is Sabine. Great. Um, and another question, is there any sort of, like, magic shops in the area? There are uh, several enchantment shops, but are you looking for something more in the um, magical items? Yeah, like general magic items. There is uh, one store. The name currently escapes me. You can find it uh, if you take four blocks west, and then there will be a multiple direction intersection. It sort of cartwheels out from there, and you'll want to go six blocks to the north. Great. Thank you. I am very sorry about whatever they're doing in the other room. <laughs> I was told to have cleaning supplies on hand. Excuse Our me. Our obviously precedes us. <laughs> yeah. I walk back into the room. What do I see? <laughs> I'm just eating like a turkey leg or some sort of meat that I found, and I am leaving nines alone. <laughs> oh, wow. How I'm generous. just standing on the table, just face first in the fritters. <laughs> <laughs> on the buffet table? That's yes. Why, that's why I'm leaving him alone. I, <laughs> that makes sense. I, I go up to the steward and say, you who are Stormbrand, I too that's have a lake. question. Oh, yes. I am most confused. <laughs> I did not get your name. It's the steward. You may call me the steward. All of us who fill this position simply go by the steward to both protect our identities and make it simple for the various travelers of the company. Ah, so you a have the same NPC name as you. the steward in, in Whitfield. I, I have a question for you. Yes. This town is so much larger than Whitfield, yet the company house is so much smaller. Traffic and business opportunities dictate the size of a company house not necessarily the size of the city. For example, you may find the city of Drogmara, the capital of Gundring, and the largest city on this continent, to have a house only slightly larger than the house in Whitfeld. Hmm. That makes sense. It does. So there is not much business for the company here. No. It is actually rather odd to have a company of four travelers visit us. We are odd travelers. No, we are even travelers. We're literally an even number of travelers. Oh, we're an even number, but we're odd people. We're the even odds. more than others. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> anyway, can you tell us what our mission is? No, unfortunately I cannot. I don't have any information about the assignment to which you have been summoned here for. You'll have to speak with Commander Soloth. If you wish to speak with him now, he is in his office, in the back. Simply go down the hallway, to my right. Mm. Oh, that seems surprisingly right. simple. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I say we go talk to him now. I'm interested to know what we're going to do. Yeah, if it's on, especially if it's on like a timetable or something like that. Yeah, I mean, you never know. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll join the company as we... 
go to Zolot's office. Right, Are you so coming so with us, Nines? <clears throat> I was about to ask if you're all going there, or is Nine yeah, staying I was about with to the say, I'm not going to say anything to Nine. So. I mean, when they say my name, do I just like pop up with a fritter in my mouth? That's up to you. Well, that's what I do then, and uh, I will just like grab two more fritters and shove in my pocket and follow them. Fair enough. Uh, as, you... as Nines walks by me, I'm gonna slip into his pockets with the fritters one of the uh, poisonous mushrooms that I have. <laughs> I think I should get advantage on a check for this since I'm used to him trying to steal or... I think you shouldn't because you're, like, stuffing your mouth with fritters and you're very engaged in that. We all know how you get with fritters. Um, I'm going to say, Dromar, make a sleight of hand check. Let's see how this goes. Uh, Dromar got a 17. All right. Um... Nines, go ahead and make uh, make a perception check. Do I That's see a this? seventeen. Ooh. Well, uh, under normal five E rules, that match that match the um, success goes to the one that defending. usually de- defending. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna say that Nines does notice this, just barely, but he does notice it. I'll, uh, do I see Nines, like, look down and notice it? Do I... Does Nines that? notice you noticing noticing? <laughs> 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 well, basically, if I, if I see him see me, I'm gonna just pull back the, the mushroom and just grab a fritter, too, and just pretend I was just trying to snag a fritter. And not actively I'm gonna murder. Say that, uh, <laughs> your passive perception was not as high as the perception roll that Nines had, so you don't notice it. Okay, then I just put the mushroom in. <laughs> so I have two fritters and a mushroom. Yes. It's a magic mushroom. A magically poisonous mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> we remember what they did to you, Drama. <laughs> yeah, they fucked me up. <laughs> yes, they did. In a good way. No! <laughs> Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Moving the story along. <laughs> come on in. Wait, come on in. I will yes. follow. Is there room in the office for all of us? Yeah, the office is about the same size as the office in Whitfeld. It has uh, room off of the back that looks to be Solos private quarters. And there's a simple plain oak desk company banner up on the walls, all the sort of normal accoutrement of the current house commander. Well, I go in too, then. I commander Sola. Oh, good. You all made it. I'm surprised that the two of you, looking at Dromar and Nines, didn't kill each other on the way, but pleased to see you nonetheless. Was the we, uh, we ride with the merchant all right? We don't just wound each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, life banter and wounding. Oh, you can't see banter. emotional damage I do. <laughs> it's called psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's very painful. I, I will admit to that. <laughs> yes, the trip was very good. Excellent. O'Leary was very nice. Well, we occasionally do work with merchants to uh, bring our different companies uh, around to our houses. It's a convenient way of protecting them and offering some free transport to all of you. So I'm glad to hear it worked out. Now I expect that you're here wondering about the job. Of course, yes. Yes. Yep. What is the job? We are wondering. <laughs> yes, we've had like three people and no one knew. I haven't been to revealed be fair, every detail of the job. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been revealed every detail of the job by the employer. But the employer is Reginald Tibbulk. I'm fairly certain that none of you have uh, previously heard of Mr. Tibbulk. He is the leader of the Tibbulk family, a prominent family of farmers and um, winemakers, mead producers here in town. We are going to meet him at his estate shortly after sundown, about an hour after the sun has set. And then he will give us more details on exactly what it is that he has hired, specifically the four of you four. All right. 
Yeah. Uh, what time of day roughly is it right now? It's right around midday, so you've got a fair amount of time before you've got to be out there. Uh, Soloth uh, opens up a little panel on the side of his office to reveal a city map. And it's got the town and some of the surrounding areas, and he points out where the Tybalt estate is, which is not too very far, continuing down the road that you guys were coming in on to the city. So you basically just backtrack and then go a little bit further westward down the road, and it's there. Did you want to meet us there, or were we leaving from here? I mean, I don't have any particular proclivities as to how I meet you, but if it's all the same to you, I suppose I can simply meet you there. All right, that'll give us some more time to search around the city and find out what's here. I would recommend that you take this some time to um, meet some of the important or more well-connected folks in the city. I have a feeling that we're going to need to um, apply some individuals for information. Is there anyone in particular you uh, recommend that we should meet? Well, I'm sure that the steward already told you about Sabine over in the mayor's mm-hmm. office. Her last yes. name is uh, Promtelin. Promtelin? Promtelin. P R O M T E L E N. So we were told that most in this town sleep during the day. Will shops be open? The more local shops are likely to be closed. However, the traveling stores that cater to merchants and adventurers are usually open. Many of the restaurants are closed during this time of day. The drow are nocturnal, so they keep rather an opposite schedule to most of the rest of us. Is, uh, is the town almost exclusively drow? I'd say around two-thirds of its citizens are drow, but even the ones who are not drow have usually shifted their sleep schedule if they are permanent residents. A few, both drow and others, have acclimated to a more diurnal sleep schedule and keep their shops open during the day. Like I said, those are usually the ones catering to the passers-through, adventurers, those sorts of people. That would be us. Yeah. Well, well thank I'm... you for the information. Of yeah, course. thank you. Is there anything else that I can offer you before we meet our client this evening? Um, I don't have any other questions, I don't think. Unless you have anything else that we should expect for this meeting. But it sounds like you don't know much either. I don't. Usually, we require clients to reveal much more than this before we accept a contract. However, our company has been dealing with the Tybalt family for quite a number of years and have uh, reached a level of trust and understanding with them. So if they are asking us for a contract, they generally have an idea that it is doable before we have even looked for the party members they request. Have you, uh, have you dealt with Reginald specifically or just with the family as a whole? No, Reginald is fairly new to his position. He's in his mid-twenties. His father, unfortunately, passed away several months ago. I think about six or seven. And he took over the family position. I knew his older brothers better. And I knew his father, Harrison, best. But um, I have not had uh, the opportunity to spend much time with Reginald. If, uh, If you don't mind me asking, did his father pass naturally, or was there some sort of murder, or...? I'm not aware of any sort of foul play. <laughs> I'm just curious if it could be relevant to the mission. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. Calm your horses, Agatha. <laughs> I don't know what you're referencing. A- Agatha Christie. <laughs> oh, I've never... I've Who's never that? that? <laughs> it's an Avenian writer. Ah. <laughs> I, I don't believe that there was any sort of foul play around um, Harrison Tibbuk's death. I think right. he just passed of old age. The last I knew, he was somewhere in his... What would it be? Uh, 120s? Yeah, that's, 
reasonably well, old, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for the information again. We'll, uh, we'll see you around sundown. Excellent. Uh, have a good day. And if you need anything, I'll be here for most of the afternoon. But I do have, um, well, it, what is considered early morning for the residents here, meeting with an old friend here in town. And she'll be gone um, sometime around four o'clock. Tell us all about your personal life. No. <laughs> <laughs> can I roll for a persuasion? You can roll. <laughs> That's a nine. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's on brand for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, sort of. <laughs> well, then, thank you, and we will see you this evening. Yes, indeed. Um, have a fine day, and if you do need anything before the meeting, be sure to stop by the company house. The steward should have most supplies ready for you all. Will do. Thank you. Have a good day. Flash oh. night. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I heard from the steward that there's like a magic shop in town, if you want to check that out. That's probably one of the places that caters to travelers and adventurers, so it might be like, open. Like magical items or like show magic? What? <laughs> What is so no, magic? Let's go there. We'll find out. <laughs> okay. Maybe there'll be potions that will make you taller. <laughs> Why would I want to be taller? Being short's sure great. Everyone who's tall is just terrible. <laughs> I'd like to go. Thank four you, block. Jomar. <laughs> I'd like to go You're four welcome. blocks west until we come to a big intersection and go six blocks north. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> <laughs> You wrote down the right. I follow, I follow, I follow you along. Go, you're like one block, two block, three block. Trauma, give me your compass. <laughs> <laughs> no! I want a survival check. <laughs> you succeed? <laughs> you're navigating a city street. It's not that hard. It's hard for me. We're not oh, in New York oh. or trying to navigate both upper and lower Wacker. This is oh, literally the largest village I've ever been in. That's There's true. so many doors, too. <laughs> so it's many. scary and confusing. Man. <laughs> what are these terrible things? <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. So I assume we arrive at the magic shop. You do. <laughs> Unscathed. That's a big story. Magically. <laughs> we magically appear. As you approach, uh, you see the unmistakable sign of a magic store. The sign is hanging out over the street, like most shop signs do, but this one is enchanted to have you know, all sorts of little illuminating, glowing, sparkling effects, making quite a noticeable presence on the street. And the name of the store is Drowning in Magic. Wow, a terrible pun. I audibly oh, like just say boo. <laughs> You guys get to do it to me all the time, so you ask for a magic shop, you get this. <laughs> that as, is a uh, very bright, shiny Does it look open? sign with a terrible okay. name. <laughs> um, as we go in, I'm disappointed that Nines has not yet eaten my mushroom, and I'm <laughs> sort of trying to poison him, so I'm just going to try to pick it back out of his pocket. <laughs> um... Uh, Nines, since you are aware of the mushroom, I will say, do you just let this happen? Or do you want to contest this? Uh, it's mine now, so... <laughs> <laughs> so contest it is. I, I button that pocket up. <laughs> so You have buttons? <laughs> well, let's first see, now that you've decided that you would want to contest this, um, if you get the opportunity to. Make a sleight of hand, Dromar. Ooh, that is not great. Uh, Guidance. 11. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know this is happening. I have super high perception. No. <laughs> he does have super high perception. Uh, you do, but it oh. takes... It, you have to say it before. I know. So. <laughs> uh, that... Nines, since your passive perception is much higher than that, to, you notice this? And you can now... Just slap his hand away. 
can I make a dexterity check to uh, try to get in and grab it before he can slap my hand away? I'm going to say no. That was your sleight of hand check. That was the opportunity. <laughs> it is now spoiled. Well, no, I'm not saying I'm not noticed, but just like, <laughs> even though he notices, I'm wondering if I can still grab it. Um, <laughs> I'm maybe I just going to squabble in the street trying to get a place to the All right, <laughs> go ahead and make a dexterity check against an opposed um, AC. I, I want, I, yeah, Ooh, sure. Not 20. <laughs> well, well, baby, baby. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You... Good, good use of that yeah. 20. <laughs> That's right. Gotta give the die a workout. Um, you managed to get the poison mushroom out of the fritters. Congratulations. <laughs> so it's, it's a mushroom hole together, or does it just sort of crumble into bits and pieces given all this well, grappling? Well, if it crumbles, it will explode and poison. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> I'll roll for the mushroom. Mushroom check. <laughs> Oh no, no, that that mushroom did not survive. <laughs> so it goes and its spores are everywhere. Now, since it was in Nine's pocket, those fritters are, well, kind of ruined at this point. But since your hand was on it, you, you get uh, three points of poison damage. Ow! <laughs> and just like before, when you tried to pull off this stuff, your hand is kind of burning at this point. <laughs> I wipe my hand off on the back of mine's coat. <laughs> well, at the very least, poison mushrooms will grow right here in the middle of town. In the middle of Nines' pocket. Soria, you notice that the shopkeeper on the inside is just sort of staring out through the windows at the four of you. Okay. I also wave hello. I'll, I'll go in. <laughs> hello! I'm trying to figure out how to handle a bunch of poison spores in my pocket right now. <laughs> You'll have to wash your clothes. <laughs> that is never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting campaign. <laughs> I, go. Uh, I will follow you into the store. Mm-hmm. I, is there room for all of us in the store? Yeah, it's a ah. it's a large enough store. It's uh, probably the equivalent of the fifty or sixty feet in width, and the front clerk is nearby the window. But there's quite a bit of depth to the store as well, going back about a hundred feet or so. Well, and shelves lined with different objects. Most of them appear to be books. There's some. Uh, clearly visible reagents that are on a shelf behind the the store keep. And there's a locked case in the back that seems to have some sort of magic items in it. Hello. Are you going to cause trouble? Nice story you I won't. <laughs> I think most of you are going to cause trouble. No, yes, I will cause trouble. Why would well, not for you. <laughs> not for you. They mostly only cause trouble to one another. <laughs> yes, you did see. How can I help you? Um, yes, well, we were looking for, well, I was looking for a magic item. Is this the place to find it? Yes. Yes, it is. We do have some magic items. <clears throat> do you have anything that could warm something? Warm something? Like Keep something. Plate. Yeah, like a hot plate, whatever that is. <laughs> something to keep something warm. For incubation purposes. For incubation purposes. Oh. She's got an a uh, egg she wants to have. I point to the egg strapped to my backpack. <laughs> it's a bullet uh, egg. Oh. This won't hatch and kill us. I would like to <laughs> have something not. to keep it warm while at the place we're staying while I'm out. Well... Very well, yes, um, actually, we do have something for that. Oh, okay. uh, please, well, I wasn't expecting um, that. Follow me. <laughs> I, I don't it know. is a large and very well-stocked store. I don't know how uh, applicable this particular object would be for you, but I think you may be able to adapt it to your purposes. Oh, okay. Uh, he stands up uh, very 
just stark, straight, and says, My name is Yadat. Yadat. Hi, Yadat. I'm Droma. Hello, Droma. I'm Sardia. I am also Ralph. That's mine. I am here! <laughs> <laughs> it is... Well, I have met you all. It is nice to meet you two. <laughs> Thank you. I see how it is. Um, you no. release poisonous spores outside of somebody's establishment, and all of a sudden they don't like it. If you please follow me, he leads you to the back of the store where those locked, um, locked cases were. I'd like to sort of scope out what the books are about and stuff as we walk back. The books appear to mostly be primers on different magical subjects. Some of them druidic in nature, some of most of them really in some sort of arcane magics. There's a couple that appear to be related to time. There is a whole, just a whole smattering of different primers on different magics. None of the books appear to be magical themselves, but more resources for those wishing to study. Understood. When he gets to the back of the store, he waves his hand over a case, and the case opens, magically so. Ooh. And he reaches in and pulls out what appears to be a pretty normal black cast iron cooking pan. Ooh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, uncommon that people ask for something so specific that we actually make ourselves here. Usually I have to turn people away looking for something so specific, but this, this is um, a design by my siblings and myself. We call it the miraculous self-heating pan. I am not the marketing person. <laughs> oh, at a hot plate! I'll have to talk to my uh, brother, Samuel. He takes the marketing very seriously. <laughs> this is, um... It, this works by a simple command phrase that the user can say, and it will begin to heat up. Up to... Uh, Hot enough to cook most things, but not so hot to become molten. Wow, that sounds super useful. <laughs> and you can control its temperature. Um, once you have spoken the command word, uh, as long as the pan is on, it is uh, bonded to your mind. And you can control its temperature, raising it higher or lower. And wow. how long does it last? It lasts for as long as eight hours. Okay. But that you can immediately reuse it after that. It's more of a safety mechanism, if anything. Um, you, could, you could use that for, uh, like, just, if you were camping in a dangerous area and didn't want to light a fire. To I know. I, now I want to. Or <laughs> <laughs> How much are they? We have several of them, if you are interested, and they are 200 gold apiece. Oh, oh my. Geez. Um, they are keenly aware of exactly how useful this item is. Uh, anyone want to loan me 150 gold? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll loan you 150 gold, sorry. You have 150 gold? I think so. Wait, how much? Uh, <laughs> platinum is worth... Oh no, platinum is worth 10 GP. Uh, I don't think... No, well, I have 148 gold. 148? <laughs> I feel like maybe... After we get paid from whatever this job is. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> well, I don't have that much on me right now, but I'm super interested, so I'll see what I can do in terms of saving up for it. Yeah, I can hold one for you if you put a deposit on it. Ah, uh, layaway. <laughs> how much is the deposit? <laughs> the one-tenth of the item's price. So, 15 gold. Okay, I'll do that. All right. De he carefully sets it into this little lower tray that you hadn't noticed before. And this tray slides back into the wall, and your name appears on the tray. Uh, so it's with an X. 
Yeah, it is. And I was correcting his spell. <laughs> the, the spelling oh. appears. Um, it just knows. Yeah, it just knows. Oh, okay. Wow. That's super magic. Is it just Soria or does it have her full name? It has her full name, Soria Ansu. Cool. That is quite an impressive beat. Well, we run the magic shop because it is our passion. So we feel that it is the little things in life that make it most magical. Jomar does not make my life magical. No. <laughs> Even though he is a little thing in your life, yes. Ha ha. <laughs> so. The, the joke wasn't that I'm funny until it was explained. It was far <laughs> funny. <laughs> I have a question. Do you sell potions? Would you happen to have healing potions? Um, our potion stock is a bit low right now, but mm. we do have a few. I forget exactly what we have left. What sort of healing potion would you like? Probably can only afford the basics. Well, yes, that would depend upon the price, I believe. How much is your basic healing potion? We charge, uh, I believe the basic ones are going for 10 gold right now. Well, 10 gold for a potion. They are magic. <clears throat> yeah, magic stuff's expensive. I am beginning to learn that, yes. Things outside of the Fervin Wild apparently are quite expensive. I mean, non-magical stuff isn't too bad, but once you add magic, it really makes things expensive. I do feel the need to indicate that the price on that is significantly cheaper than most places in the world. You will find far more if you travel outside of Nordfeld. In this particular region of Lindring and a bit north into the Fervent Wilds around here, we have our own collection of reagents that are specifically used to make healing potions. A smaller amount goes much farther than most reagents for the healing potions. So our prices are a bit lower, you will find. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have one that I had found. Um, if we are forced to use it, uh, perhaps when we return, I may be w wishing to buy that. I have an idea. Does anyone care about this box of smells that I have? <laughs> nope. All you ever do is use it to make me smell like Axe body spray, so you can sell it. <laughs> I have a magical box that I was wondering if would be you would be interested to trade for this much more useful frying pan. Great the negotiation tactic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? The soundtrack suck. Give me better ones. Uh, honesty is important, isn't it? Let's play poker. Here are my cards. <laughs> but this is very Don't show unique. me yours. <laughs> and would make a great addition to a shop that you wanted to smell like something. What? Just don't make it smell like Axe Body Spray. Uh, Press me is on it exactly. Pull out my box. Inside there are a number of books about olfactory magic. Intriguing. But even better, what's your favorite smell? Um, I have to admit, I am a sucker for a warm glass of spiced mead. I, what? I did expect it to be Axe Body Spray. <laughs> 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 Tap the box, thinking of warm spiced mead, and activate it. Hmm. How intriguing. I have never seen a device quite like this. It's oh. very unique and interesting. Very rare and expensive. Only one of its kind, as far as I'm aware. Well, Not at all the crappy things she initially <laughs> sold it as. You set your expectations low and then build it up, is I assume no, how it works. That's not No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> where, um, where did you find this uh, particular device? In the Fervent Wilds. In the wilds? Near Ram's Marsh. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah, I believe that I could safely offer you... 200 gold star credit. I think I could safely offer you 175 gold star credit. 
Oh, and with my 15 deposit, I'd only have to pay 10 more gold for the frying yeah, pan. Yeah, you should do it. I'm pretty good at math. <laughs> Cannon. <laughs> I will trade you this box and 10 gold with my deposit for that frying pan. Um. Very well. This would give us um. Uh, Dromar will like it more. Interesting opportunity to study and see yes, how this yes, box works. <laughs> Uh, since you haven't really left the back area at all at this point, mm-hmm. he simply waves his hand over the drawer that had sealed the item away for you, and it comes out. He he waves the yeah, pan up, and it just kind of floats up and to in front of you. Um, the box, if you please. There you go. Thank you. I mean, I'm so sorry you had to oh. part with that wonderful item. Yeah. I'm sorry. We should find out if they have an endless can of Axe body spray here. Oh, no. And I will. Or only two copper. Subtract <laughs> 10 more gold from my inventory, putting me pretty low. But now I have a fireless frying pan. Yeah, that's, that's also a good name, fun. fireless frying pan, by the way. I must admit, that sounds better than what my brother Samuel had come up with. What did he come up with? Miraculous self-heating pan. Yes, precisely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's fine, too. <laughs> yes, if you want it to sit on a shelf forever. You should put your, your, your name on it. You gotta brand it. <laughs> Is there anything else that I can help you all with? Uh, I'm happy with my thing. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Yes. I do not wish to interfere, but did did you get the command word? Oh, what's the command word? It is whatever you wish it to be. Whatever you wish it to be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a very lo- that is a <laughs> command phrase. It's more yes. secure. <laughs> I will. I will make. Ah. With make, capital letters and special characters. I will make the <laughs> command word hot. Yeah, that's something you'll never say just <laughs> in passing. I think do you, you should use a wise like holding it. You don't necessarily have to be oh. holding it, but it, will, it's magic. Okay, it my, my command out. word is flame on. <laughs> Your command word should be Flamio Hotman. <laughs> We are going to get slapped with copyright infringement so fast for that one. It's my command word, though. Flame on? <laughs> yeah. Flame on. It down. God. <laughs> I'm going to have to put a beep in on every episode I upload to YouTube. It'll be fine. Probably. You could add a security sound. Flame on. Flame on. on. Possibly be copyrighted. Flame off. <laughs> oh, Why are we be having a flame on for the fireless heating device? <laughs> It's an invisible flame. Yeah. Just like Wonder Woman's chat. It's all invisible. <laughs> well. Is there anything else that you wish of the store? No, I may be back for a potion later. Thank you. You're welcome. As for you nice two. Nice to meet you. It is, um. Hi. Don't take any mushrooms out in here. Is there anything that looks expensive near me? (laughs) (laughs) I'm afraid to answer this, but, you know, it's a magic shop, so most things look fairly expensive. I don't know, he's kind of looking at me sternly, so I guess I will turn tail and leave. (laughs) Were you going to steal something? No, I was going to knock it over. Yeah. Oh. I'm not a thief. (laughs) He's just a menace. Well, usually you don't ask if there are expensive things to knock over. You just ask, like... What the what closest there is thing? to knock over, yeah. <laughs> Nines of stealing in an expensive food. Just... <laughs> I'll follow Nines out. <laughs> All right, so you. I'll follow Dromar out. I will leave. You I'm have out. made a purchase. Um, I you can write down the item, and oh. I'll add it to your inventory later. I wrote it down as a custom item. All right. Done does, with the magic shop. Is there anything else you guys want to do in town? One question. Yeah. Does this fireless frying pan 
uh, operate like a cook's utensils? Or is it in addition to? It's in addition to. Okay. For example, it's not a knife or a spoon or all the other things. But that it lets me cook utensils. without a fire. Correct. Okay. Great. I think we should go uh, find Sabine. Yeah, it's probably getting late enough. Yeah. It's, you, you, you guess, around uh, mid-afternoon right now. It's definitely not late enough. Oh, okay. It seems well, to be can... about mid-afternoon. Thank, thank you, Olsaf. You uh, are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should head there and we could just Wait, loiter. hang out. Yeah, let's loiter at City Hall. What could go wrong? Let's do it. Yeah. Sure. Yes. This do, is going to be great. Does anyone know the directions to City Hall? No, but I'll just ask anyone around. There's a few people wandering the streets. Um, like you were told by Uliri, not many are wandering around right now. How do you get to City Hall? <laughs> it's the tall building in the center of town. It's the tall building in the center of town. Ah. I used my survival training. <laughs> Good job, Soria. Very well I'll, I'll done. I walk in the direction that the person was pointing. I walk it's... in the direction of the tall building in the center of town. <laughs> it's Which fairly easy to get the there. Direction that the person was pointing. Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> um, the city is a little bit of a hub and spoke design to it, with the city hall being at the center of the city and a bunch of streets radiating out from it. So within you know, a fairly short matter of time, you make your way towards city hall, which is, as was pointed out to you, one of the taller buildings in the city at three stories plus a large clock tower mm -hmm. on its southeastern corner. It makes it pretty darn easy to find. That's a lot of stairs. <laughs> um, let, us, the, let us hope, for my sake, <laughs> that our meeting is on the ground floor. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, Dromar will walk up to the door and just try it. Is, it. is it unlocked? Yeah, it's unlocked. This is a public building, and you know, they mostly allow just free entrance into it. Okay, I will head on it. When you enter, there is a large... I'll go in frame. behind you. Just in case. Are you all going in? Yeah, I think so we're all we're going in. No specify. Yeah. All right. As you enter, there's a large atrium that's oh, about to 15 feet tall. And the, the walls are plaster lined. There's a big roaring fire in the back of this atrium. And there's a clerk's desk about 10 feet after the front door. So you're looking right at the clerk's desk right now. As we walk in, I'm just shoving a frying pan into my backpack so that it's up next again <laughs> against where the egg is, and I'm going, flame on. Okay. <laughs> is there a, but like how hot do you want it? But low, very low. I don't <laughs> want it to burn anything. I just want it to radiate heat. So you want it like a warming blanket temperature, yeah. like a hundred, and five or so. Tops, yeah. Okay. You uh, can have 105 of something. <laughs> you do that. As <laughs> 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 hot as it gets. <laughs> and I stuff my backpack full of feathers and hay. <laughs> really dry <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> um, is there someone at the clerk's desk? Yeah. At the clerk's desk, you see a uh, rather out of place looking dwarf. And this dwarf has uh, big rosy cheeks. Hello, I'm Dromar. What's your name? What oh, my name? My name's Clement Rose Cheeks. That's a good name. It fits you very well. Clement? Glimmet. Glimmet. Oh yeah, my whole family, they got the rosy cheeks. That's where we got the name. Well, uh, it's, it's very nice to meet you. These are my compatriots, uh, Soria, Seth, and Nines. Uh, we Boy, are it's a pleasure to meet you. He reaches his hands oh. out and kind of forcefully takes each of yours and is just shaking oh, it you. way too nice vigorously. 
Oh, bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, uh, is, is Sabine around? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm the day assistant. The Sabine's the night assistant. You know, the primary oh. assistant to the mayor. I just keep an eye on things around here during the day. When, uh, when do you switch shifts? Well, not for a few hours yet. I usually just rely on whenever she shows up. Mm, makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, well, is, uh, is there anything in town that you suggest, uh, some, a band of four newcomers should check out in the next few hours? Well, since it's a particularly nice day outside, I usually say check out the lake. Uh, since it's the daytime, there won't be too many people to, uh, you know, jostle for spots with. Mm. Well, that was recommended to us earlier, too, so, uh... Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Thank you very much. We'll be back in a few hours to try to meet Sabine. Oh, all right. Is there, uh, is there anything else I can help you with? I do not uh, believe so. What do you know about, has anything been going on with the, uh, Tybulches? Tybulks? Oh, the Tybulks. Um, well, not that I've heard of. Okay, just sort of business as usual. It's been very quiet around here, like it usually is. Hmm. Okay. Yes. It is a very quiet town. Yeah, just wait for sundown and that changes it quick. Oh. Yeah. Well, that is they something. They love the nightlife. <laughs> they like to boogie. <laughs> Shall we go to the lake? Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's head over to the lake. Everyone says we should go to the lake. Everyone does say that. It's almost cult like at this point. Wants us to go to the <laughs> the best people tell us to go to the lake. All of the best have told us that, yes. The smartest people. We go the to the lake. The ones we have met. <laughs> <laughs> Execute. <laughs> Execute, yeah. You know, <clears throat> the funny thing is, I just wanted to make the lake kind of a point of pride for the people, and for some reason you guys think that I'm railroading you there. There's not that much to do during the daytime in a city of nocturnal residents. We could take, like, a nap since we'll probably be working all night. Yeah, that's actually a better idea than going to the lake. Let's do that. <laughs> like, go, go back to the company house. So we might not, nap. like, get exhausted. Yeah, maybe just take a nap and do, like, a time jump. We could, uh, we could that just... would be most exciting for the viewers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will nap. Seven and under. We will, we will nap now Even for four hours. Naps. <laughs> yeah, seven and under, seventy over, both love naps. <laughs> Cater into our demographic. <laughs> We're gonna get some graham crackers and apple juice. I'm gonna fall asleep right in a rocking chair. Well, shall our we other go sponsors, back? Sponsors: warm milk and honey. <laughs> shall we go back warm to the cookie. company house to nap? Uh, yes. I mean, we got about a quarter hour until four o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, which is when. Most of our viewers will be eating dinner, so <laughs> it'll be a good time to take a break in about 45 minutes. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe we, should, Let's uh, maybe we should take a nap on stream just to uh, really connect with our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yes. <laughs> Go we take a. Okay, let's four go to the company house <laughs> and take a and take a four-hour nap. <laughs> I'll turn the lights low. <laughs> that That's would be helpful. Yes. Music. <laughs> some quiet, gentle music, but not off. I don't want to. Maybe dark. some smooth jazz. Mm-hmm. Cool jazz. Yes. We'll, we'll have the Whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back to the company house to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Do they have a place for us to nap? They do. They do have a place for you to nap. It's called your room. Ah, oh, we each have a room. <laughs> yes, oh. just like in the last company house. You each have a room. You can take a nap in there. With a door. I mean, I suppose each. that you could take a nap in I, just like the generic understand. company room, but not sure you'd want to. I go up to the steward. Hello, you who are steward. Yes, how may I help you? Yes, we have arrived during the day, but have a meeting in the evening, and so are going to nap. 
could you please wake us in? He's <laughs> playing it to him like he's an idiot. I love it. Just, <laughs> I don't have alarm clocks. We'll could you please let us know when three and three quarters hours have elapsed? Just, just ignore him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, kind of grab Wilseth and try to escort him away. I'll show you how to work the alarm clock in your room, Wilseth. Don't worry. It'll there, wake you up. Yes, there are clocks in your room. You can set them to chime at a given hour. Yes, well, please make a wake-up call just in case. This is an extremely important meeting. Uh, yes, don't, of don't course. Don't worry about it. <laughs> sort of confused at the request, but uh, obliging nonetheless. Thank you. <laughs> He's just a curmudgeon. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, he needs his nap time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I go to my room and take a nap. Me too. <laughs> I'll, I'll go into Ulset's room and set his alarm for him as he goes to bed. I lock my I'll door talk, so I'll nines can't about. go into people's rooms and oh, I just sleep go, on the foot of the I, bed. I just go to the highest traffic part of the uh, the building, and I just sit <laughs> right in the middle of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Uh-huh. I will go to a room as well, and I will set my alarm and lock the door. Just any room, Jomar? <laughs> an, an empty room? My room? <laughs> I think they have assigned rooms. Uh, as you all are... Oh, once you take, you can pick a room, but once you take yeah. a room, it becomes yours for the duration of your stay. Mm. Uh, as you are familiar with, the rooms have small uh, arcane devices, little swirling magical orbs floating in the air that you can twist and turn uh, so that it makes a pleasant chiming noise at a given hour. You set your times for, I'm guessing, around 7.30, yeah, just before nightfall. Yeah, well, we wanna we wanna get enough time to go see Sabine and then go meet uh, at the uh, at the, the stage. <laughs> and also well, probably we eat. might need we <laughs> might need to see Sabine after. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so yeah, okay, let's just uh, set it for just enough time to get down to the to the Tibluk Estate. All right. Execute. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fantasy game. I can fall asleep immediately. Yeah. <laughs> no anxiety at all. Uh, yeah, exactly. What do you mean there's enemies around? <laughs> <laughs> you lay down in your bed and uh, fall asleep, except for Nines, who lays down in the center of the hallway and falls asleep. The, you hear the steward mumbling something to himself about, I was told that it was going to be this much trouble, but I didn't quite believe it. <laughs> does, uh, does Nines have the zoomies at any point? That's nines. No, no, I'm tired. Fair enough. The allotted amount of time passes for your alarms, and they go off waking you, again, except for Nines, who's in the hallway, <laughs> and who's sort of gently shaken awake by the steward. I, I sleep through my alarm. <laughs> I'll go and wake this up. <laughs> You're really hammering in that over 70 market. <laughs> <laughs> well, Seth, wake up. I don't know how you slept through this alarm, but you did. Ah, yes, I was, I was worried about that. That is why I asked the steward for a wake-up call. <laughs> You know, in the intro, you said how you were fairly youthful, but uh, <laughs> this does not seem to be the case. <laughs> I am a very sound sleeper. Oh, okay. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> About what? <laughs> uh, he's, he makes sounds when sound he sleeps, sleeper. right? Oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, mm. no. There is uh, no literalism. What's the excuse happening. me? Why are you talking to the steward? Yeah, yeah. Yes. What's the best way to get down to the Tibulk estate? Uh, simply head out the main entrance to the city and follow the road westward. The Tibulk estate will make itself uh, plain as it is quite large, noticeable, and has the name Tibulk outside of it. Branding. Uh, rumor is going to hop into the... Um, uh, eating area real quick and just grab a handful of meats and cheeses and, and bread and 
<laughs> just a hand. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah just food. like I'm not gonna bread take one of their plates. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I'm just gonna like take some bread and put some meat and cheese on it, make like an open face sandwich, and just head out. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Do so they have like have... a whole turkey in there by any chance? Uh, no. You'll find that most of the meals here are considerably smaller in size than what had been prepared in Whitfeld, given that the size of the company house is also much smaller, and thus the company members currently staying at it. Drama, you need, like, holsters with t- uh, for each, for two turkey legs? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> greasy, greasy holsters. I, uh, Old Seth has a reasonably sized, healthy lunch, dinner, whatever. Breakfast. Whatever this is at this time of day in this town. This would be considered for Nordfeld? Mm. Uh, oops, an earlier breakfast. Ah, okay, I have a good breakfast. <laughs> However, the company house mostly puts out uh, meals corresponding to the time of day that diurnal individuals are on, since the majority of the company house is... Uh, Travelers and tenants are going to be diurnal rather than nocturnal. Then I have, instead of a breakfast being diurnal, <laughs> dinner. Well, what's important is that we are heading <laughs> to the Tivoca <laughs> State. I just wanted you guys to know what... spend uh, some more time working out what kind of meal is at this We time. are <laughs> not playing Red Wall. <laughs> Aren't we? Maybe I think we're not playing Red Wall. <laughs> are, we, are we switching to... Uh, <laughs> Mouse card. Uh, not we'll mid session. Elderberry wine. I figured I'd set the stage to make sure you guys know that the city is a little bit different. But, uh, so, you follow the steward's instructions, following the road out westward from the main gate of the city. The city is, unlike Whitfeld, it's not walled off. It's just sort of just open edges. You can just kind of walk right in. But there are. You know, principal gates, as they call them, that are the main roads in and out of town. And you follow the one that you came in on, and then follow it more westward. Within a matter of about 35, 40 minutes of walking, you come across a large estate that sits atop a hill. And the windows are all lit brightly from the inside, and there's a little glowing sign that says Tibulk. This must be the Tibulk Estate. There's a sign that says Tibulk. Or it's a trap. Or a coincidence. It's it's not, but it could be. I mean, it could be those things, but I'm going to go with what I said. (laughs) Oh, Dromai, you are always so certain. You don't see so much. I do have the highest intelligence in our party. (laughs) This is about time that we were supposed to meet him. Yeah, he may very well be inside, inside, as far as you know. All right, we'll go up and knock. Or I will go up and knock. I will you don't just go in? No. <laughs> Do you still look like your elf self, or have you... Uh, no, I'm yourself? just keeping low profile, basic elf. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if you were uh, giving yourself a fine mustache or any, any sort of fanciness. I have no reason to right now. Fair enough. Unless you give me one. I will stand back <laughs> at a respectful distance from the door. All right. <laughs> Mine stands at a disrespectful distance. <laughs> <laughs> like, just I am just right door. next to you. <laughs> just pawing at the door. <laughs> the door opens inward, and you see the face of, you presume to be a sort of butler. Yeah. Yes? Uh, hello. Help you? Yes, we're here for the uh, meeting. We're members of the Company of Blades. Oh, uh, yes. I was told to expect you. Come oh, in. Okay. Oh, thank you. I will. I'm already inside. <laughs> I will follow <laughs> I follow at a respectful distance. <laughs> Social distancing, everyone. It's not important. over yet. <laughs> That's right. You follow the butler in, and he leads you to uh, basically the dining hall, where there's a uh, the table set, a large array of 
um, breakfast items put out for everyone, and a slightly smaller array of dinner items laid out, including um, cured meats, uh, cooked turkey, yeah, pancakes, waffles, uh, some warm glasses of mead, just a whole smattering of things for different times of day. Is Commander Soloth there? You don't see him, but within a moment or two, you hear his voice coming from an adjoining room just off at the other end of this dining hall. I put a disrespectful amount of food on a plate. <laughs> is it uh, too? Is it like a lot of food or barely any food? Like I definitely should have used two plates for this. <laughs> gotcha. But is it like falling off the plate? Or is only if I make off? sudden movements. <laughs> okay. So yes. So yes, it's it's falling off. Fair enough. Got it. After a moment or two, you see Commander Soloth enter from that far room with a very young-looking uh, male drow trailing behind him. And they're both sort of having a soft laugh to themselves. Oh, come into so love. You always know how to spin quite a tail. He's a funny guy, let me tell you. We've been adventuring with him. He's got a lot of good tails. <laughs> yep, hasn't told them to us, but he has all. <laughs> I have seen nine spin a good tail. Yes, I have best tail. That's debatable. And there's a debate I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm Dromar. Everyone, it is uh, a pleasure to meet you all. Dromar. My name nice is Soria. Soria. And uh, the names of your two other companions? I am Ulset Ralph. Ulset. I am Nines. Hello, I'm just eating right off of the plate because you have to balance it right. <laughs> yes, Are you please stuff off help yourself. <laughs> Dig in, enjoy everything around you. you know, this is um, the best show of hospitality that uh, I can muster. I am a little short on supplies. I apologize for the sparseness of the meal. Oh no, this looks wonderful. Thank you very much. I will have some waffles. We could have used a ham. Uh, there is actually uh, a ham. A honey baked ham. Pick up the ham. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You wanted a honey baked ham, not a salted ham. Got this, it. This place does make mead. They probably could easily do that. They probably have one if you so want to ask for it. Also, it takes a respectful. Nah, I'm just going to be better about it. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. Also, it takes a respectful amount of a variety of foods onto a plate. So respectful. I'm being that. Uh, yes. <laughs> trying now. Trying care- to be careful. Reginald plops down next to mm-hmm. Nines and begins piling an equally heaping amount of food <laughs> on his plate from mostly the breakfast portion. <laughs> Drummer is going to take not a huge pile of food, but a variety of, of different breakfast and dinner items. I just have waffles. Between bites, uh, Reginald is mm, please, everyone, dig in. It is delicious food. Oh, yes, it's very delicious. Thank yes. you so much. Mm. It is excellent, is, is, yes. it, is it just Reginald, or do you go by Reggie? Um, if you wish to call me Reggie, please do. I usually go by Reginald. No one has ever called me Reggie before, but uh, I think I like that, actually. Look, look, we'll be the first to call you Reggie then. I mean, specifically Soria will be the very first. <laughs> <laughs> we will be the first group. <laughs> I You're hope you all are enjoying the short time you spent in our city of Northland. It, uh, it's a very beautiful city. I'm, I'm yeah, glad we can't you wait so. to see it at night when it's all bustling and everything. And we've heard a lot about your lake. Like, a lot about it. <laughs> like, the DM must really want us to go there at some point. <laughs> well, we are very proud of our lake. It is beautiful and uh, rejuvenating for one's skin. And filled with Dasani. And probably a Kraken. It uh, admittedly does not taste the best. Which is why we... Exactly. Uh, <laughs> 
We don't use its waters for uh, drinking. We usually get our water uh, from all deep wells that we have dug. That is very practical. Yeah. It, it well tastes done. better. But uh, I did not, I'm sure you know, summon you all to talk about the wells of Nordfeld. Oh, we are not here for the waters. Yeah, <laughs> we are not well inspectors. <laughs> I have, um, I have to know a bit about you all before I reveal um, why I've summoned you, for this is, well, it is very sensitive in nature. So if you wouldn't mind humoring me, please tell me a bit about yourselves, whoever wishes to go first. Perhaps Dromar should go first, he is most humorous. All right, I'll go first. Well, <laughs> as I said, my name's Dromar. Um, I'm a goblin, as you may or may not know. I don't know how many goblins you know. But I'm from Silcine. Have you ever been to Silcine? Ah, uh, yes. I, ha I was there once as a young lad. And it is a beautiful place with yes, uh, truly astounding it, it, weather. Yeah, it, it, I agree. It's, uh, it's very nice. It's, uh, we get a lot of tourists like, like yourself that come and, and visit the island. Have you ever seen any of our strutting competitions? <laughs> I have not. You have oh, a, wow. s a strutting competition. This is uh, news to me. Please we tell me have more. Many. Yes. Well, you, you, I'm sure know what strutting is. Uh, it is in in Silcine and in other parts of the world uh, an art form, a sport, if you will. And we have many strutting competitions, but every year. On Silcine, they host the World Championships of Strutting, and I, Dromar, am, uh, I, you know, I don't like to brag about it, but oh, I am a three-time oh, World Strutting brag Champion. About it. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, uh, you have won the World Championships of Strutting three times, you say? Th three times consecutively, yes, How indeed. Incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm an incredible person, what can I say? <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I won the strutting competition three times in a row, uh, when I w starting when I was 20, and then after my third time, I decided to, to leave Silcine and uh, make a name for myself in the rest of the world as a, as a rogue, and uh, now as, a, as a, a mercenary in the employ of the Company of Blade. And that's what brings me here with these fine people that I've known for about three and a half weeks now. <laughs> Intriguing. Ah, it, 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 you have to show me some of this strutting. I've never had the pleasure of witnessing oh, it myself. well, if you insist. <laughs> and uh, Dromar will very happily, uh, feeling very chuffed, get, get up and, uh, and do his, his absolutely, absolute best strutting that he possibly can. Feeling so chuffed as you are, and having... Um, been training quite a bit. Please guidance. feel free to roll with advantage and with guidance on your Ooh, strutting check. Wonderful. Let's see. For all of you many viewers at home, Dromar Ooh. does have a trained ability called strutting. Dromar rolled both a nat 20 and a 4 on his d4 guidance. Uh, so let's see, 24 plus 9, so I got a 33 strut check. <laughs> All right. Literally the best strutting ever. <laughs> Reggie yeah. just has like a single tear <laughs> running down his face. <laughs> Reginald didn't know quite uh, what he was in for. But it still doesn't. Uh, <laughs> you begin, you begin strutting. Uh, feel free. Go ahead. Describe yeah. the performance that you want to put off. Dromar is just absolutely glowing. He is grinning from ear to ear. Uh, being on the road recently, he hasn't had a chance to do much strutting. He's he's feeling refreshed, though, from this nice journey, sleeping in feather beds and everything. And this is really the first time that he's been performing for somebody in a while that hasn't seen the art of strutting. And he's just walking through this this long room. I assume there's a beautiful carpet on the floor, beautiful surroundings. Mm -hmm. And he is just 
swinging his arms from side to side and popping his hips out and doing the whole heel toe heel toe and he's bouncing as he walks and his his head is just moving around like there's music in his head not nines's music good music <laughs> and uh <laughs> He's just uh, pointing at everybody as he goes by, and he's saying, "How are you doing?" And uh, <laughs> you know, he's uh, he's kind of saying, "And this is how you strut. You see, you just kind of walk like this, and you swing your arms around, and you just move your legs around, and you pop, and your hips are going out the side." And uh, then he does a big flourish at the end, and he says, "And that's how you win the strutting competition three times in a row." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Also, Seth is stunned. <laughs> Commander Soloth, uh, never actually having seen you strut before, his jaw is wide open, mouth agape, and your demonstration that to Reginald has left him equally speechless. He's just awed, and there's like this kind of twinkling in his eyes. He seems like he's been struck with some truly magical experience that he hasn't he hasn't ever seen something quite so spectacular before from just a single performer moving their body around. Yeah, you've uh, you've made a deep and profound impact on him with your absolutely magical. If you were uh, in a strutting competition, you easily would have won. You are fairly I certain of that right now. I can only assume that uh, from from here on out, Commander Soloth will be patting Dromar's pay a little bit more than the rest. Of the <laughs> no. No. You can think that. <laughs> you can imagine that. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> well, spectacular. Um, that that was. Um, I've I don't think I've ever seen such an amazing display before. Uh, where did you learn to do this? Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I learned growing up on so Um I, uh, I trained under a former strutting champion and master uh, for, uh, for much of my youth. Uh, it was, I will say it, it's, uh, it's something that kind of always came naturally to me in this style. There are many different styles of strutting, none of them inherently better than the others. Some people are more fluid. Some people are, you know, do a little bit more of a stompy strut. But uh, but this is my own particular brand, and it has uh, has suited me well over the years. Oh, well, I I think I must get to sort of scene someday to see the uh, world championships for myself. It's uh, it sounds amazing. Yeah, I I, uh, I haven't been back to Solcine in a few years. I, I honestly, uh, aside from a, a brief foray into judging a strutting competition back when we were in Whitfeld, uh, I really haven't kept up much with the world of strutting, so I'll, I'll be interested to see how the sport has progressed and who the champion is these days. Well, when you wish to return, please let me know. I would be oh, just overjoyed to come with oh, you. It absolutely. sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, it'd, it'd be nice to show someone uh, my home of Silcine sometime. Well, um, to ensure I'm not a rude host, please, uh, Nines, tell me about yourself. I have never had the pleasure of meeting at the Baxi before. Yes, well, the Baxi's are great, so it's disappointing that you have not met us before. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm Greatest Bard, but Greatest Bard deserves Greatest Instrument. And jerk teammate stole my instrument, and I need to get it back. Not one of us, former teammates. Well, these are just people I follow because there's food everywhere they are. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> it, that was a bandmate, right? Yeah, bandmate. Some guy. Yulon or something. He's actually a terrible musician. I don't know why people liked him. It, I'm, I'm sorry, did you say his name was... Guy... human? Yeah! It's not even a good name! <laughs> His name sounds is Guy up. Human. <laughs> yeah! That sounds incredibly fake. I mean, someone would say it's, like, stage name, but, like, that's what he call, made us call him. Huh. And he stole... What, what exactly did he steal from you? 
stole my grandfather's lute. Great instrument. Just like oh. took it one day. It's like I'm done. And they left. And I thought good riddance until I saw that he took my instrument. Well, um, he does sound like a rather uh, unpleasant person. To say He's the least. a dick. <laughs> 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 I don't believe I could have said so better myself. <laughs> so, uh, what is your golden knife? Presumably to get get this instrument back from Mr. Human? Yes, I need an instrument that will make good music and that can be famous, you know. It, it, that is a plan. <laughs> what do you plan to be uh, famous at? Looting? <laughs> Like the good kind of looting, not the Dromar kind of looting. Uh, I think you've got those mixed up. My kind of looting is the good kind of looting. You can get paid for doing that. Your looting is a crime. My looting is not a crime. Only if you get caught. No, I've never got caught to looting. I know. <laughs> well, I am very sorry to hear about your um, loot theft. That is uh, beyond unfortunate. It takes the lowest of the low to steal something from another person. I despise thievery. Especially from me, that's the worst. <laughs> Being the victim Rumar of theft- will kind of like pat himself <laughs> down, make sure he doesn't have anything on him that's like quite clearly stolen from anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Mr. Uh, Ralph, was it? Oh, Seth Ralph, yes. Oh, Seth Ralph. Is that one name or together, or two names, or...? It has, for me, always been one name. Oh, Seth Ralph. Yes. It is a good name, not, um, not a name uh, that I am familiar with. Where about are you from? I am from the Fervent Wilds, in the, the far east part, uh, from a wooded area. Hmm. Um, what is it you would like to know about me? I am not very good at telling stories. I... I am That's curious. <laughs> Sir, what, what was your upbringing like? I've met some people from the Fervor in the Wilds, but usually only from uh, the nearby area. Oh, were, how far east were you in the wilds? Oh, I lived very close to where the elves are. Oh, as far east as Kusteria, then? Yes, yes. Um, when, when I was young, everyone in my village disappeared. It was... I do not know. They had just disappeared. And so, mostly, I grew up just on my own until, in fact, an elf from Kusteria uh, did come, and we did meet each other while I was hunting. Intriguing. And uh, did you befriend this person, this elf? Yes, yes. It was, it was a very important time in my life. Um, Lanfiran was a member of the Order of Remarden. No one has ever seemed to have heard of that, but he taught me um, the way of the fighter. And, and we, we did spend almost eight years together uh, as, as he was my teacher. I see. Um, well, uh, did you uh, decide to set out for some particular reason? It, it is very painful for me to recall. Uh, um, my apologies. Do not, do not feel pressured to yes. recall painful memories for my sake. I am really trying to get to know the people that I am about to hire. Well, it, it is quite important. Um, Lanfiran was on, on a mission to slay a beast. And we went north one day and encountered a huge beast um, and did slay it. However, uh, the, the effort cost Lanfiran his life. Um, and he has charged me then to carry on the Order of Remarden 
and and I now bear his armor and his weapons as I venture forth to slay the beast. Hmm. However, I do not know what the beast is. How intriguing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Take ground yelling, kill the beast! <laughs> And just chopping limbs off left and right. <laughs> I have not ever yelled, kill the beast. It goes through the mist, through the woods, through the darkness and the shadows. <laughs> I I really don't need to deal with copyright. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that is my story. There is there is more, but in, in that that is essentially it. I am now trying to carry out uh, the the legacy of Lanfir and, and the Order of Remarden. How noble of you. Mm-hmm. Well, he did. Yes? Well, he did say something right at the end of his life, and no one knows what it means. He said, Graz dun balim. Those were his very last words. A phrase that means nothing to me. Hmm. I, I wish that I could offer some help to you, but uh, well. I, I'm not one who is... Uh, very helpful outside of how to run a farm. Well, thank you for listening to my story. I have met these companions. Um, uh, I am following my code and um, hoping that we together may someday um, fulfill my my teacher's mission. I wish you the best of luck on that. Thank you. uh, And... um, for the, the last member here. Yeah, Miss Ansoul. Yes. Um, well, I also come from the Fervent Wilds. Um, <coughs> my clan, though, lived much further north and more in the central parts, in sort of a, a frigid swamp, if you will. Um, and I spent my days there learning about my tribe's history and learning my druidic magics from one of my friends and mentors up there. You are part of an elven tribe from the center of the Fervent Wilds. Um, yes. How, how interesting. I was not aware that there were um, elven tribes living there. And we were very isolated. And you had the... I should use the word, I think, pleasure, maybe uh, sparingly in this case, but the pleasure of meeting a fae? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, hmm. That is where I learned my magic from. I hope you don't mind the intrusion, but uh, in this area, we are more attuned to the fae wilds than most of the world. You know, I thought I felt something. There is uh, an aura that you you give off to those who are sensitive to it. <coughs> well, here, I'll use my staff to make a flower grow out of, like, the tile on the floor. <laughs> uh, far from being uh, you know, flummoxed or put off in any way that his tile now has a flower growing through the, crack. uh, through the cracks in it, he seems overjoyed and goes, oh... It is uh, rare that we get to experience such wonderful and simple magics as this. He's holding the flower you created. What type of flower did you create? Um, I will have created a uh, a lily. Uh, is he going to eat it like everyone else you give a flower to? I have literally <laughs> only given one flowers to a small goblin child. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we'll find out. We'll find out. Stay tuned. (laughs) (laughs) After the break. And now we're going to take a break to leave you on that cliffhanger. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Stefan, please put this in a vase. Um, It's not a plate. Saving it for later. (laughs) (laughs) Refrigerated, I wish, for dessert. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yes, I have come down here because, uh, my village was uh, attacked by raiders or something, and my people were taken, so I'm here looking for them. I had heard from some contacts in Whitfeld that there were quite a bit of trouble with bandits. (coughs) Yes. 
I don't know if it were bandits, though. At least not the ones we dealt with. But Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. It is a tale all too common, I'm afraid, for many in the fervent wilds. Yes, but none of the people were killed, as far as I can tell, so I have come searching for them. Well, for what it is worth, if I hear anything about uh, a tribe of elves that I seem to have been captured. Are you familiar with heraldry? Me? Ah, uh, I cannot say that I am. Huh? Uh, but, hmm, I may have some contacts for you. Well, see, we do have some animals here on the farm, but not, uh, not many. And I may be able to put you in touch with someone who can help. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all for sharing. Oh, of course. Would you mind telling us a little bit about you? You see... Um... I am... I am very reluctant to share this. A very, very valuable piece was stolen from my home. I'm sorry. Hi, hi, Dromar. (laughs) (laughs) This particular item um, was an item of great value and great power. It enabled us to do many things here on the farm that that, um, would be well, I won't say impossible, but it would take a great many more people to accomplish. And without it, uh, my farm will, well, without intervention, it would uh, fail this year. Was it a tractor? I'm sorry, what? (laughs) Never mind, don't worry about it. What, what did this item look like? Yeah, um, the item is a small sphere, uh, about the size of a, a, a chicken, yes, but yay large. Is there a chicken inside of it? No, it is, it is uh, quite old, a mechanical item. I believe you have encountered similar pieces in your adventures. So, or at least pieces connected to this. It is known as Fervin Tech. It is a device invented by the engineer Fervin hundreds of years ago. And its um, its abilities, its powers, enable us to quickly water our fields and churn our mills without nearly as many resources as our competitors. So we take up a smaller footprint than most of the other farms, but produce more. And unfortunately, we don't need quite as many people to tend the smaller plots. But without the aid of this device, our plots would not be able to be watered and harvested at the appropriate times. And worst of all, we have quite a large uh, population of honeybees. You see, you may not know this, but the Tibuk family is most famous in this region for its particular brand of mead. We've heard, yeah, we've heard very good things about the mead. We have been supplying the city of Nordfeld with its uh, high demand mead for more than four centuries now. And it does not get shipped too much outside of the city, yeah, because most of the city residents consume it too fast. <laughs> However, uh, this device allows us to tend more to the bees and less to the crops. And without both being in sync, uh, many of our bees would die, and we would lose not only the honey production, but a great number of the hives that we have. 
and a great number of our crops would not be able to be pollinated. Uh, this device, you see its importance now, is at the center yeah. of our farm's production, <laughs> and it was stolen. Now, my family has enough hands available for the moment to keep things going, but we could not last through a whole season like this, much less harvest. How long ago was it stolen? It was stolen roughly three weeks ago. Oh, okay. And do you, would you happen to have any sort of drawing, schematics, any anything that you could show us that would uh, give us an, a better idea of what this device looks like? We have never made a drawing or taken any schematics of it. As a matter of security, you see, uh, this type of technology is very sought after, and we would not want our competitors to know that do we even have it, because it would invite, well, the sort of actions that we believe that came upon our house several weeks ago in the theft of the item. Uh, but I can describe it to you. It is, uh, yes. as I said, spherical. But it has a brassy sort of exterior, highly polished and glossy. Yet its outer casing, the sphere itself, can be removed by turning a small knob on the bottom. It blends in with the sphere itself, so you sort of have to know that it is there. On the inside, my family paid to etch our family's symbol into the sphere casing. That is how you can identify it. What he hands you a piece of parchment that has their family yes, seal on it. What does it look like? Fairly simple. Um, it's a it's a four cross. <laughs> it's a sort of pattern with two blocks that are both this sort of honey colored gold and then um, a bee up in this corner and a pretty classic bee hive, like a beekeeper's hutch down in this corner. And then framed in sort of a shield configuration. Does this uh, sound to Dromar like anything he would have seen in the uh, the ruins that we uh, that we were exploring previously? This doesn't seem to be anything that directly correlates to what sort of fervent technology you'd seen in the ruins before, but it doesn't sound wholly dissimilar from devices that you have seen and then sort of heard tale of over the years. This is very rare stuff. So what's inside the container, the exterior? Well, I cannot claim that I understand everything that is inside it. I, unfortunately, am no better an engineer than anyone else. And as you well know, uh, Glindring has been trying to understand what makes fervent tech work for the better part of three centuries now, and still have not been able to figure out that Grand Master's designs. So, I'm not sure. It is, uh, if you've ever seen or heard described any of these pieces, very mechanical. Lots of swirling gears, and there's a, a glowing crystal deep in its center. It's mostly obscured by all of the uh, mechanical devices and cogs that surround it, but it, uh, it is very complex, to say the least. Are there... do you have any idea who might have taken it? Are there rival families that, uh, you know, have particular uh, vendettas or uh, economic interests that might have led them to take it? We have plenty of rival mead producers and farming families in the area. Um, but I admittedly don't suspect that they have taken the device. So, one, it would be, well, not impossible, but unlikely that they are aware of it. And two, if they were aware of it, they wouldn't really be able to implement it so quickly. 
See, this um, powers a sort of irrigation system that we use. They would have to spend a great deal of capital investing in their lands to create a system that this could power, which would, of course, tip the hand, and we would know who had taken the device. Mm. Proving that they had taken it would be no harder than simply opening up the case and showing the seal of our family on the inside. I Could suspect that um, someone, someone has betrayed my family and sold this information for money to the local thieves' guild. I've heard tale of them in the area, and <laughs> they are the sorts of folks that would uh, not blink an eye, not waste a single moment's worry, stealing from another person or family, no matter how low they were in society. Much as someone as myself who has benefited from things. Truly despicable creatures. So... Thieves' Guild, you say? Oh yes, everyone in the area is very aware of the Thieves' Guild. Hmm. What, what can you tell us about the Thieves' Guild? They operate uh, in the underbelly of the city, in the, you know, daytime hours in the taverns. All of the usual the things that thieves do. I don't pretend to know that much about them. Uh, nor would I want to with the despicable oh, sure, cretins. Sure. Um, is this, uh, as far as you know, a localized guild or part of some sort of larger establishment? Well, to the best of my understanding, there is a thieves' guild in almost every city, and this is their regional power for them. They choose ah. not to operate out of uh, Drogmara proper because there's too many royal guards and too much attention, so they operate out of our quiet northern town. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Oh, right, right. bastards. Thank you. So could, could we see where it was stolen from? Um, I believe that I can show that to you. I have a, I have a good feeling about the four of you. If uh, Commander Soloth also thinks that is wise, he looks over to Soloth and says, if they're going to help, you should probably show them as much information as you can. The more we know, the, the easier it'll make our job to get this back for you. <laughs> well, Dromar is a security expert and <laughs> could maybe help uh, determine the method of theft. Yes, exactly. I um, yes. I have a lot of experience with security. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's me. <laughs> Almost as much as strutting. Almost. Yeah. Um, then, please, follow me. Yeah, he gets up from the table, <laughs> and he grabs a fritter to take with him. Mm. Yeah, I put a lot more on my plate right before we started uh, heading down. And he just starts munching on it. Huh. You get the sense that this is sort of his habit, if not the region's habit. Just sort of eating and on the go. He leads you uh, down to the back of this house. Uh, yeah. On the way, I ask a question. So, did they steal only this item, or did they th take other things as well? Oh, they took several other things. Most of it just uh, some spare piles of emergency gold, and... Yeah, and Jomar's eyes like... <laughs> <laughs> and, well, you shall see in a moment where they took the device from. But when he gets to sort of the back of the house, just off of the kitchen, the doors to the cellar, which are heavy wood doors bolted over, he unlocks them and pulls them open, and then leads you down into the cellar. He then uh, pushes one of the stone bricks in on the wall, and the wall slides back, making this sort of grinding uh, noise of stone on stone as it is pulled away from the wall and then slides off to the side. Uh, we've had this uh, built to help keep things secure. This is why I'm fairly certain someone betrayed us to the Thieves' Guild. Very few people know that this place even exists. Who and helped it, build it? 
Oh, several uh, generations of my family ago. Uh, put this in. Oh, so themselves. That, yes, uh, my great great uh, uncle was a very talented engineer, and his sister, my great great aunt, she was a stonemason. They built this together and hoped that it would serve our family well over the generations. It has kept most things very safe for hundreds of years now, but um, it takes a little maintenance, some oil to keep things going, and only those in the family and a few of our very closest friends even know that this is here. Was there any sign that it was broken into? Or did it look like it always does? It did not look as though there was a forced entry, if that is what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, is, uh, what, what, what are the security measures that you have in place to keep people out if someone were to find out about this place? Uh, simply our presence. So, uh, it has been such a deep secret of our family that we have not admittedly spent much time worrying about protecting the inner contents more than its existence itself. So... Is it uh, kept locked? Uh, only in so much as the cellar doors are locked and this here is secret. You would have to know the exact right brick to press. You notice, uh, since it's been you know, shown to you which brick it is, that it is pretty well hidden. Someone would really need to know to look for it, to even think that there was something there. This isn't something that would stick out unless you knew to look for it. And, uh, there are no traps or anything? No. no. Uh, okay. No, yeah. and the off chance that someone, uh, especially a younger member of the family, should find this, we never wanted to put any direct danger down here. And this is my home, after all. I don't want to fill it with something like acid or trick blades that could harm someone sure, else. Sure. Why would poison, anyone do that? Poison mushroom spores. <laughs> um, no, nothing like that. No poison no. mushroom spores. No. No. Do you mind if I take a look around in my capacity as a security expert? Um, no, please, uh, help yourself. Um, <clears throat> the, the vault is, well, quite empty at this point. Thank you. I will give you guidance if you're going to be doing any searching, just in case. Thank you. I am, yep. Um, I would like to do an investigation, and I want to be, like, super thorough. I want to check if I see any sign of any, like, if, if I can, like, look around where the brick is and see if I can tell if there are any other bricks around it, like maybe slightly dislodged or anything, where if someone was, you know, knew roughly where it was and was trying to push but didn't know exactly, or any any sign inside the area where it looks like someone was rifling around, you know, trying to find something. Any Anything that looks out of order where someone who didn't know exactly what they were doing was here. Okay. Um... If you take a minute to look around, and because you're not under any pressure or any rush, you can take your time and be as thorough as you need. I'm not going to make you roll. Okay. What? You, you look around. First at the activation mechanism in the wall of the main cellar. You don't see anything that shows uh, like someone was kind of digging around or missing it. There's no indication that the surrounding areas have been disturbed or that someone was sort of fiddling around, at least any more than you can tell from the sort of haphazard pressing of people who have known it over the years. So nothing seems out of place there. Within the vault itself, which is a small room about four feet wide and six feet long, it's, um, it is mostly bare at this point. And you see that things in this room don't get moved often. There's kind of a layer of dust that creates an outline of objects that were once there. You see some sort of soft kind of blobby 
outlines that you think, oh, that's probably a sack of coins or something like that, since he had mentioned that they kept some spare gold down here for emergencies. And you see some other rectangular and um, you know, circular imprints into the dust lines. And it's very clear where this object that you've been hired to recover sat. There's actually this, well, almost an altar piece, but it's all mechanical. It has a little linking gear that you surmise the sphere would sit in, and it goes down into the ground and has small cogs and the wheels around it. And it, it seems very plain that this is the center of the system that he was talking about that's running all of their irrigation networks. It's on the property. Nothing in here seems um, too very amiss, but you do notice that there are a couple of fairly large square um, footfalls within the dust. A shape that is much bigger than uh, Reginald, and certainly his butler, Stefan, that you've seen. It doesn't seem to match anybody in the house, at least that you've met. But you've only met two people, and you have no idea if there are any more. But this seems to be the only thing that's really out of place, if you will. Does, uh, does it look like the footsteps of a medium-sized creature, or does it look like a larger creature? <laughs> this, uh, this looks like a very tall person. This is probably someone who's... <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I do not have square feet. Um, you might have square shoes, though. <laughs> you had square shoes. Yes, I had boxes. <laughs> yes. Ah. Well, ah. I am not that tall. <laughs> um, you you think that if this is roughly the shoe or boot? size of someone that it would be um, it, someone about as tall as Ulseth, you know, give or take a little bit. Hmm. But it's a, it's a tall individual. Yeah, on a strict game mechanic side, you couldn't tell whether they are sure. a large size category or a medium size category. But you can tell that they are large in stature. So, so when I you will... say square... I don't mean like an exact square, like right. it's a rectangular shoe, shoe footprint. Square I will, uh, toes. Yeah. Motion to the to the footprints, and look up at uh, at Reggie, uh, and I will say, "Do you have anyone on your staff that um, is a, a larger person, maybe about the size of a little staff, give or take, that could have made these footprints here?" Um, no. No, I, I, I cannot remember anyone that does have footprints like that. How did you notice such a subtle thing in the dust? As, uh, as Sori mentioned, I am a security <laughs> expert. This is what we do. This is, uh, this is the type of thing I do for a living. I security expert. Oh, <laughs> uh, as you say I that... I just killed to people. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I've killed less people in this campaign than. Sorry, Nines and <laughs> Dromar, uh, you all notice uh, Soloth just rolling his eyes <laughs> very hard. It's almost <laughs> like shouting how much he's rolling his eyes at this. Look, breaking in and stealing things is being an expert in security. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Neil Caffrey. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> that TV is show. a white collar cut oh, okay. for everyone who <laughs> watches is, USA. So. For everyone who watches USA, so that's our seventy and older demographic. <laughs> <laughs> so you who are Reggie, I ask two things. One, are there any witnesses to the break-in uh, who could identify or describe those who took the item? And, as my second question, could we get a list of those that you know, know about this brick? Um, 
I, I can tell you that there was no one who witnessed the break-in. At least no one who's told me. As for people who know about it, at least those that I am aware of, it is uh, Stefan here, uh, my family's loyal butler, and has been for, um, what is it now, where, three decades? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, my f uh, immediate family members, they're the only ones who are aware of this. Would, uh, would you mind if we talked to each of your family members? No, of course not. Um, they are... They're not here at the moment. I would warn you, we may have to be slightly indelicate uh, in order to find out who might have been in on this, if, if one of them was. Do any of them have any crippling debts or sick family members? Or, <laughs> or know anyone no. with this size food I, uh, footprint? I... Uh, certainly none of them uh, fit the description of that footprint. But um, none of them have any troubles that I am aware of. But I have two older brothers and an older sister. My oldest brother, who is uh, Harrison Jr., named after my father. Uh, he hasn't um, he hasn't been around the farm in some time. He lives in Drogmara. Mm. He and my father had. Uh, falling out. And although he and I get along well enough, he's, um, the farm is rather painful for him. The next youngest is my sister. Her name is, uh, Sophine. And Sophine, um, well, she comes and goes. She's, uh, mostly, uh, uh, on her own schedule. She's, she likes the farm, but, um, well, is a bit too irascible to work with many other people. She likes solitude and quiet. I am capable of giving that to her, but um, trying to work with others is hard for her. Mm. She spends a great deal of time alone, uh, camping in the woods. When was the last time that you did see her? Well, she goes away for sometimes weeks at a time, and she's been gone for um, four or five weeks now. Slightly longer than usual, but this is hardly out of the ordinary, at least at this point. She doesn't communicate when she leaves like this, so, and I'm afraid after the last time that she was here, she became so, hmm, how do I want to put it, excited? No, not excited. Uh, uh, f angry. Yes, angry at the, the lack of the ability to focus. There's too much noise for her. And, and she left to find solitude in the woods. So my youngest brother, his name is Philip. And Philip is, oh, well, he's always been a bit of a, a uh, troublemaker. He's, uh, well, unlike Harrison Jr. and myself, uh, Harrison runs a very successful uh, business out of Drogmara. They are, um, well, they are crab importers. There is an incredible crab industry out of the city of Krebstadt. They have dire crabs that they harvest off the coast, and he brings them into Drogmar. He's very successful and um, actually worked with several majors to uh, create some new uh, refrigeration, uh, chilling sort of charms to help with the transportation mm. of the crab. But, uh, and I am the head of the estate now and running our farm. Philip, on the other hand, well, he never had much of a drive to do anything that our family wanted. And he, he, we lost touch several years ago. I haven't he, seen or heard of from him since. But do you know if he's in town or local the, somewhere? The last I heard, 
is that he had been down in um, the Comerian Republic, mm. not the uh, not where I would have gone if I were in his shoes. But I personally always thought his lack of judgment to be a rather worrying sign. Now, I suppose if there was anyone in our family who could betray us, even if accidentally, it would be him. And knowing the Republic, there are plenty of opportunities for people who would want to purchase that betrayal. It could be him. Ma, I don't think it would be my oldest brother or my sister. And I fear that any of them could be in trouble if someone were motivated enough. Do you mind if we ask Stefan some questions since he's here? Uh, yes. No. Yeah. Please, go would right you, ahead. Would you mind if we asked him some questions privately? Stefan looks over at Reginald. Sir, please. I am more than capable of answering these questions. And I take no offense. They are being very thorough. Yes, uh, absolutely. Very well. Uh, thank you for being so understanding, Stefan. Now, I will be upstairs, uh, waiting if you need me. Uh, thank you all for your thoroughness. And when you are done, now please feel free to help yourself to as much food as you wish. I have um, duties to attend to on the farm today. And... Uh, will probably be out of the house when you return now to the upstairs. Thank you all again. It has been a pleasure meeting you, and please return my family's heirloom. Of course. We will do our best. Thank you for your trust in us. And, and your hospitality. If, and, and the food. And if, uh, if you think of anything else that might be helpful, please uh, pass along the information to the Company of Blades. They will make sure that we get it. Ah, very well. Thank you. Well, um, so be before we leave, I match my foot to the footprint, just so I can, <laughs> just so to I make can sure see, you're not doing crimes and see, yeah, I crimes. just want to get some sense of what what we're looking for. The footprint, uh, you know, you have very different. This is like a very square-toed boot sort mm -hmm. of construction, and your footprint doesn't match it exactly, but it's. Uh, it's just ever so slightly smaller than your footprint is. So if it's any measure of the height of the individual, you would guess that they are around your height, give or take a few inches. Well, so it's like, so I could take them. <laughs> just inside uh, his head, he's uh, Yeah, just kind of that, yeah. <laughs> um, Jomar, would you like to interview Stefan or any of us? Or would you like me to interview him in a more magical way? Um, maybe we could uh, do it together, sorry. What do you okay. think? Sure. Uh, before we do that interview, uh, I want to take a quick break, because we've been going for a while. And freshen up, get a drink, give everyone a chance to uh, get a drink and stretch out at home as well. So we'll be back in a few minutes with the interrogation of Stefan, so, join us then. Thanks.
Hey everybody! We are back here at the table with Dice and Dungeons. Uh, when we left off, they were about to interrogate the butler, Stefan, wondering if anyone uh, anyone had been around the uh, family estate of the Tibok family, wondering if maybe he had uh, arranged to steal a device. So let's continue where we left off. <coughs> So how many legs are needed to bottle properly? <laughs> what? <laughs> how many legs do you need to bottle? To bottle? Oh. Because he's a butler. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Did you ask him that? No, I was being you. Oh, you're not me. Are we going to be literally him for this interrogation? No. So, no. Good trailer, bad trailer. I, I stand back at a respectful distance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry. Why don't I get started, and then uh, if we need, then then you can use your your magical ways on it. My creep, good? my creepy magic. I didn't say it was creepy. Your magic's great. Oh, okay. Well, here's a guidance. It's great. That's being creepy. Oh, thank you. Um. So, Stefan. Yes. Um. Look. I'm not gonna. You know. I'm not gonna rough you up or anything. Well, I just, I just wanna... while you're doing this, I'm just honing in on Stefan and looking for any sort of like attempts to lie or anything like that. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. I would understand if if you did this or if you sold the information or you know helped somebody do it. What if you know? I know you Come know on, these are some that. rich folk. And you're just, you know, a butler. And, you know, it, I, I would understand if you wanted to make some scratch on the side and, and sold the information, or if you stole it and they're going to sell it. I, I get it. I just want to know if that's what happened here. Is that what happened here? Are you asking me if I betrayed the family that I've been working for for three decades by selling information about their most secret and prized possession? Yes, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Olseth is overwhelmed Insight. with the subtlety of the, uh, <laughs> of the interrogation. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make an insight check I if you want to. I want to make one, too. You have guidance? Yes, thank you. It's not bad. Uh, that's going to be... 24. Uh, dirty 20 for me. You don't have any reason to suspect that he's lying to you right now. Okay. I believe him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> You're good. One question. <laughs> Moving on. Execute. No. Do you, so do it's you like an episode of Law and Order. Execute this guy. Did you do it? No. no, no. no. Boom, boom. <laughs> and the episode's done. No <laughs> way. Oh, you know, he's... He's a member of the proletariat. He's a downtrodden butler, maybe. You know, I would. It doesn't look like downtrodden. Do some wealth distribution. I would. I would get that. You do know, you I get, know what it is. Do you get paid in fancy suits? Do I get paid in fancy suit? Your no. suit's very fancy. No, I. No. I get paid in normal money. Normal person money. <laughs> like, I can note of that. Do you uh, do you have any idea uh, who who might have done this? Do you um, have any no. any any inklings or anything? <sighs> I any can't suspicions? say that I I have any. Well, no. If I'm being completely honest with myself and with all of you, I worry that our second youngest master is likely been compromised. Is that Philip? Yes. Master Philip. I worry what that he has either compromise? given up the information, either in a drunken stupor, or been persuaded through money. And for all I know, and it pains me to think of it, he could have found himself in a in a, well... Pickle. Someone could have forced the information out of him. Mm -hmm. He's never been the most subtle one, you see. I can relate to that. 
Who is it that <laughs> operates the device? Um, no one operates it. Oh, okay. It runs on its own. That's, well, that's part of the technology that no one has been able to understand is exactly how it operates and why it does what it does. And when it does it, we can't say. Do you, uh, do you know where Philip might be? Well, as, um, Master Reginald told you, Philip was last known to be in the Coma Republic. Mm Mm-hmm. And you Um, don't, you don't have any other information? No, the capital city of Coma, well, uh, it is an unpleasant place to be, at least as far as my personal inclinations are. Most of that country is run by powerful individuals that have little care for what happens to those they step on. Where were you on the night slash day of the theft? Here, in the home, as I always am. And you didn't notice anything? No, I can't say that I did. Uh, we went to sleep at our usual hour of, um, well, shortly before dawn. And when we awoke the next evening, we found that it had been stolen. We heard nothing, but the house has never been one to be insecure in the past. So I admit we are perhaps lack on our security protocols, but... We've never had any reason to think that we were at risk. Do you, uh, do you have any inkling of who these footprints might belong to? Have you seen anyone of this stature uh, around recently or around the time of the, the theft? No. Well, if you wouldn't mind me looking more closely at the boot print that you have. Yes, of course. Um, Go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, Stefan walks over to the family's vault and uh, kneels down, carefully examining the print that is there. Well, I don't recall meeting anyone of particular note that was this tall, but we do have the occasional traveler, and uh, as Master Reginald has said, he suspects that this is the work of the thieves' kit, and who knows what sort of individuals could be in such company. Do you know you any? Help? Oh, sorry. Well, if you don't mind, sorry, I'm sorry. I okay. just, I, I, but about that thieves guild. Uh, what can you tell me about this thieves guild exactly? Do you, can you tell me anything that uh, that Reggie didn't tell us? I don't have any more information to share than Master Reginald did, but uh, from the stories that we have heard, among uh, others in our social group. Which is admittedly, yeah, rather, well, the well to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've heard that the group, this guild of sorts, uh, operates out of the seediest taverns during the daytime hours in Nordfeld. Ooh, and they, uh, well, okay, okay. target, uh, target anyone that they uh, get information on, anyone of some value. But they, of course, protect each other and don't want to give one another up should they ever be caught. So you can't ever really root them out without infiltrating them yourself. Sure. It's a bit sure, like a uh, Medusa, if you will. Yeah. Sounds that, like a job for Ulseth. <laughs> <laughs> you are Thieves Guild. You are um, Thieves Guild. I am here to join you. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Ulseth. Um, one, one more question, if I may. Uh, yes. Who ha- who exactly uh, did these rumors of the thieves guild originate with? I mean, who uh, who found out about them and was able to tell the the rich people uh, about about this thieves guild? Who was snitching? Is what you're asking. Who, who was clever <laughs> enough to uh, to weed out this information? Well. Uh, no one within our social circle, of course, but there was a, uh, what, what's the right word that I'm looking for? An expose published in the local newspaper several years back 
And it ran for weeks, this information about... Do you know uh, who wrote it? And the name escapes me, but it was one of the local reporters. Uh, would, you wouldn't happen to have a copy still, would you? I know you said it was a while ago, a few years, but uh, would, you, would you happen to have a copy of the article? I don't. We usually don't keep our newspapers for more than a few days at most. Maybe at the town hall. There yeah, is uh, a public library here yeah, that uh, keeps some important records. It's uh, uh, open to anyone who needs to see it. It's all our public information. Taxes, property holdings, those sorts of things. Uh, it's kept in a building just south of City Hall. Uh, oh, several thank you. blocks off the main square of town. Now, you can find it easily enough. Uh, it is simply labeled the public library and the records. Oh. So feel free to look through there. If there is anywhere that has um, information about the newspapers of that particular day and era, they would have it. Okay. Sorry, what were you going to ask? You are very well dressed and probably know all about the people who make clothes in this city, correct? I know several of the tailors and seamstresses, yes. Do you know any cobblers who specialize in either big and tall footwear or <laughs> unique toe-shaped <laughs> footwear? <laughs> big Anyone who makes sure that you love the way you look. Yeah, <laughs> and will guarantee it. Really? We don't um, get paid. Sass to us. We might as well embrace it. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that men's warehouse does appeal to the 70 and over category. So. Yeah, exactly. And the under seven group, because the 70 and older bring their kids to get awful suits. <laughs> but they hate wearing. I think they're Sunday's best. That don't fit them properly. <laughs> We'll grow into it. I guarantee it. <laughs> I mean, I'd worry that about that. Is not where I got this vest. Potential sponsor <laughs> down the road here, but their business isn't doing so well, so I'm not that worried. <laughs> Thanks and Dungeons, there, where you want shades thrown at men's warehouse. Are there any cobblers famous for making unique footwear? <laughs> Suck it, potential future business daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, there right is. The uh, what, what business do you want us to insult next? <laughs> <laughs> next Twitter poll. That's right. <laughs> Who do you want us to alienate We've next? Covered week? We've covered the Sony. We've covered. Which megacorp haven't we pissed off? For Let me talk about HBO for a few minutes. No, I love HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Give us free HBO Go, please. Please, yes. That's right. Um, I don't also know any... the last season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of any uh, cobblers that specialize in that particular shoe, no. But uh, there are several names of some repute in town, and a uh, few that to make pretty... High quality shoe wear. Usually, most of the best made shoes are, um, are sourced out of more southern areas. Okay, thank you. Since this footprint is so clear and obvious, I am wondering <laughs> if we could search the outside to see if there are more, perhaps to see their approach or departure. I was thinking the same thing, old Seth. I like your idea. You're, you're starting to think like a real security expert. You'll have to be really good at investigating. This was three weeks ago, though, and it rains a lot here. Yeah, it, we probably won't be able to find anything, but you never know. You never know. There may be a sheltered spot. No. You know. Um, shall I... Uh, am I presuming correctly that you are taking your leave? Yes. I yes. think that's it. Unless there's anything else you think that uh, might be helpful to us in our investigation that you can tell us. Such as more pockets full of food for nines. I don't I believe that there is anything. Right now. <laughs> oh. I don't believe that there's anything more um, that I can offer for true substance. However, if I am recalling your conversation with Master Reginald correctly, you, you had asked about heraldry and if we knew anyone, correct? Yes. And he had mentioned that we knew some people who work with our animals. Yes, I was confused about that. 
Yes, we brand... Did he think husbandry? No. We brand all of our cows, you see, oh. with our oh. family crest. Mm-hmm. And we had it made in combination with a look, blacksmith and someone who has been working with family crests for quite a many years, designing them for new families that wish to make their mark, and continuing to update them for families that wish to integrate new generations of ideas into their designs. So, um, he has prepared a small letter in an envelope with the family seal and wax on it. To, if you take this to, um, what is the name of his shop? Uh, I believe it is one of the finest prints. Uh, that is prints as in royalty, not prints mm. as in a printed item. Oh, I was going to ask. The finest prince, uh, his name is Hartfeld. Hartfeld? Does he wear yes. a lot of purple? Matthew Hartfeld. I wear a lot of purple. Uh, you do wear a lot of purple, but I was wondering if the finest prince guy wears a lot of purple, too. He has uh, uh, kept the family crests and seals and made all sorts of items for families and organizations such as your own Company of Blades. Oh, per- wow. For quite a long time now. And he may be able to assist you. Well, I believe that is who Master Reginald was thinking of Great. when he remembered our cows. Thank you so much. Oh, that's a no on the purple. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say the color of his clothing. <clears throat> All right. It's unspeakable. It's an unspeakable, <laughs> yes, <laughs> unnameable <laughs> color. <laughs> Banta black. <laughs> We're getting into some like Lovecraftian like. Yeah, color like, from outer space. Just absorbs all light that comes from <laughs> It's constantly clouded in darkness. No, no, Stefan knows the color, just can't say it. For legal reasons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a branded color. <laughs> there have been some lawsuits in the past. His lawyers have advised him against talking mm-hmm. about it. <laughs> Someone accused, All right. someone on our accused way, Matthew on, of wearing loud clothing <laughs> once, and that just went... On, on our way out, <clears throat> Tromar, why don't you look at how you would sneak into this house and see what sort of points of entry you would use to steal something from in here? If you um, Good idea. wouldn't mind me observing, no, I would um, I would like to know, as I plan several security upgrades to our state. And of if course. you end up rolling for it, I'll give you guidance. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know what rolling for it means. I don't roll around when I sneak in. You often, I notice you roll with a lot of things. You like just roll with it. I do like to roll with it, yes. Um, I will walk out the door. I'm going to first start by just examining around the door. Uh, I'm going to basically take my time again, walk around the whole uh, building, look uh, especially carefully at the, 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 the base of the building and especially by any windows, anything like that. But try to keep my eye out for any footsteps, of, especially of this size, any points of egress that you know normal people might not take that look disturbed or anything like that. All right. I'm going to go back to the buffet table and just grab two pints of mead. <laughs> Put them in your pockets. It oh. is. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just. It, it is really good mead, for the record. Uh, one of the finer means that you've tasted. So you can see what the to do is. <laughs> good yeah, that. Nines, is that mead good? This is the best mead I've had in a while. Ah, I will join you then. <laughs> well, Dromar does his security. Do you just like tip the mug and go? Like your idea will set the mug and just like I'm gonna let Dromar handle it. Now you see, I'm holding two of them and I'm just going over a third well, one, just laughing at it. So, so the thing is, it's around. night now, and I don't have night vision. I would not be able to see anything. They have lights on in the house. Not outside. Is it lit up all outside? They probably have sconces. These are fancy I mean, people. They do have some. Uh, sconces and torches and things, but what you notice most is that 
There are these. There are these lamps that surround the immediate estate. Not like all the fields and everything, but the immediate household. And within the lamps, there are no like glass sides or cages or anything to them. But there's this kind of faint, growing and fading glow that emits from beneath this little hood. And uh, the longer you pay attention, you notice that there's these little reflective bits that kind of float in and out of it. It looks almost as if there's like this collection of lightning bugs or something, you know, creating these lanterns all around That's the estate. And as it's now firmly nightfall, you look out and you see other houses that dot the landscape, and they have similar lamps that you can see off in the distance. And even the road, as it nears the city, has larger versions of these lamps that act more like street lights, with these little flickering bits floating in and out of the center of the light. So is there enough light for me to see if I were to help Jomar? Although it's dim, but you can certainly make, I mean, you don't have any trouble making out the objects that are nearby the house. I'll also use my hooded lantern. <laughs> okay. And I, I'll, I'll accompany Jomar because it was my idea. And I'll give you guidance and point out where all the doors are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a thing, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Now, since you aren't... There's something weird that scares me. <laughs> <laughs> now, even though you aren't under any sort of pressure or um, timetable here, there's no stress, because this is a much wider area, much larger area that you're searching, and you have less of an idea of what you're potentially looking for. I want you to make an investigation check here. And since he's being aided, does he get advantage? Yeah, he can have advantage on this. Okay. Do I do uh, this too? Oh, snap! Uh, that's another nat 20, uh, plus one for guidance. There you go. Six investigations, so 27 altogether. All right. I'm rolling very well on some of my checks tonight. We'll say you can the also, um, I'll let you also make a check uh, not with advantage, since no you advantage. are assisting Dromar here. Um, 17. Okay. Yeah, and that's a door. As, <laughs> as Dromar is looking around the sort of paths, and you take a, a walk around the exterior of the building, looking for anything that might indicate a forced entry into a window or a, nah, like a window well, any sort of egress, as Dromar said, you notice that there are a couple of tracks that match that boot size. Mm. And they go uh, just off to the side, looking into, on either side of the pathway up to the main door, just looking into the windows. You see them uh, pushed in the dirt. And there's not complete sets. It's been several weeks since these yeah. were made. So there's just like, uh, a little bit of a boot print here, a little bit of a boot print there, and only very nearest the building. Is that just the one set of boot prints, or are there others? You know, you never even find two together. Okay. You only see like... But they're all the same shape. They're all the same shape. You're only finding little fragments that are left over at this point, but you had an idea of what to look for, and investigated very thoroughly, and you were able to find just little pieces. As far as you can tell, it looks like whoever this was, was making uh, making an effort to look in the windows and probably observe whatever was going on inside of the manor. Or right, since all of these marks are very near the windows themselves, and kind of a little bit off to the side, they're not are right there, in front of them. They're just a little off to the side of each window. Are there shutters on the windows or anything? There are shutters, but they're open and. You don't know if they would have been open or closed. I will point. I will point all these footprints out to Stefan, and I will say, "It, it looks like he must have been uh, casing the state. Uh, you can see he looked in several different windows. Uh, you may want to start 
you know, closing the shutters or drawing the curtains inside or something. Give a garden mammoth. <laughs> yeah, that'd be With a, a nice hat. <laughs> um, have you have you noticed anyone in the past uh, month or so, maybe a few weeks before the theft, looking into the windows? No, I, I cannot say that I've noticed anyone looking into the windows, no. Mm. That's uh, going to be very disturbing behavior indeed. It, it does look like they, they knew what they were doing. They weren't just standing in front of the windows and or like crouching beneath and kind of peeking up, which is what a lot of people do. They were, they were doing what they should have and kind of standing off to the side and sort of getting an angled view in and peering around. So uh, they, they probably, you know, had some experience at least. Like a Thieves Guild professional. Oh. So yeah, Jomar. sure, like a thieves' guild <laughs> professional. Look, I'm a security expert. I don't know what you're trying to insinuate here, Orsa. I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> that Frank, I don't that know was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said something. Right? You I, said I, was going, I said Jomar. <laughs> yeah. Jomar, you have been investigating. Have you seen any sign of possible forced entry? I, it doesn't look like any forced entry. It it seems like they probably, you know, maybe went in through the front door, but they were they were investigating through the windows. I see. So, Stefan, did you notice on the night that the object was taken any signs of dirt or tracking in the front door? Hmm. I can't say that I paid special attention, but I clean the floors daily, and mm. I mean we are on a working farm. And Master Reginald, as well as many people who work on the farm, come in and out for of course uh, yes. their lunch, their breakfast. Some even come by for dinner, and there's usually a fair amount of mud and dirt and other bits of detritus that's left in our main entryway. So. Even if there had been someone coming in from the outside, I doubt that I would have paid special attention to it. I understand. Did you notice any, have you noticed any uh, dirt underneath any of the windows that shouldn't have been there? Anyone trying to sneak in one of those ways? Hmm. No. At least not on the inside. I can't say that we spend all that much time cleaning the exterior. It may be worth investigating some of those windows. As I would find it uh, very unusual if there were any sort of large dirt streaks on our windows, there is no reason for one to come or go through a window. Well, let's take a look. Guy dance. Go to all the windows and and check. And go ahead and make an investigation. And okay, since the... uh, Ulseth is assisting, you can roll with advantage again. Was I understanding that right, by the way, that you said there were tracks by the doors that it looked like maybe somebody went in there and was just investigating through the Well, by the doors, since those are, like, there's a kind of wood landing area in front of the door and everything, yeah, nothing that you found there was of any relevance, and there's way too much traffic for it to be, but the things that really tipped you off were the large square-toed boot print like portions, those fragments of a boot print that you found underneath some window sills sure. and things like that. So, uh, I rolled another nat 20, and all three the of the nat 20s that I've rolled tonight have been with this one die. Uh, this, my, the, my usual die is not rolling that well, but this white one that I just got recently is rolling fantastic. Looks like you found a new usual die. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, so Good Nat lord. Three plus two plus uh, investigation uh, six, so twenty-eight. And I had a nineteen. Okay. Well, um, you guys are rolling damn well today. Yeah. I mean, having yeah. advantage really helps. <laughs> but well, still, that's the point. Twenties is really ridiculous. So, uh, you look around the house, and. You can't be sure that this is a sign of entry or anything, but on one of the back windows nearby the kitchen, there's some dirt streaks 
that are beneath one of the windows, they're really nothing more than that. There's not, there's not any clear sign that this was like someone scuffing it with their boot or their knee or something like that. They're just dirt streaks. It could be from, you know, something running off of the roof or splashing it from the ground, but it's something that looks a teeny bit out of place from the rest of it, but it's incredibly subtle and it's not much of a clue if they really entered there or maybe even brushed it if they were looking there. Right. This is one of the more um, sort of open sides of the house. There's less sheltering it, and there's a lot of weathering that could have happened in this period of weeks. And as you're kind of looking around, you actually notice that the sky above you, which was sunny earlier today, has become quite cloudy, and you all sort of feel that rain is about to set in, and it's going to start precipitating here in the next little while. Mm -hmm. This is a very rainy part of Glindring, and it's very common to have a rain shower most of the time. I, I try to open the window from the outside just to see if that's possible. You are able to kind of shimmy the window open. It's a little awkward, mm -hmm. but you put a little pressure on the bottom frame and you kind of move it a little bit, and then once you get enough of a crack, you can... Okay, it's big enough for me to crawl in. It is not big enough for someone of your stature to crawl in without mm. a great deal of struggle. Mm. You could physically fit through the cavity of the window. It would be hard. Also, so, windows are not doors. If it was, <laughs> I was if attempting it was. to see <laughs> if the thief could have come in this way. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, you, so you knew that, didn't you? Yeah. You were size. just doing that, yes. Yeah. Because that is how you are. They would have alerted people, right? Like yes. Would have annoyed. This would not have been an easy way to enter. It wouldn't have been an enter. easy way to get into the house. Um, it, at least for someone of Wolset's size, uh, that would be commiserate with the boot print that you have been finding hmm. evidence of throughout the property. Okay. This is not a likely way of entry. <laughs> I agree. Well, especially watching you try to get through it, I don't think it, that would have been. It was really funny, though. It was pretty funny. I agree. <laughs> so is it? It's about to when rain. When your feet were kind of flailing in the air, that was especially yeah. You good. liked that part, yeah? I did. That was pretty good. I laughed a little bit inside. I liked when you went. You are a window. Let me through. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. Uh, I heard that we, in my we head. We all knew you were thinking it, though. Yeah. So, what time of the night is this? How far are we from daylight? Uh, you're not 100% sure at this point. Mm -hmm. You're pretty good at telling the time of day, but most of you don't really keep track of the time of night. So, you know that it's been a couple hours since the sun went down at least, but... Stefan? You're not sure. About how long is it until daybreak? <laughs> Stefan looks around. Um, I believe that it is roughly, yeah, six hours from daybreak. Mm. Wow. So. <clears throat> it is I, the I, summertime here, so mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a little, the nights are shorter. I would like to do one more thing, uh, and then I think maybe we should go try to talk to Sabine. I think we've pretty well exhausted our options here, but if, if I was a thief, Theoretically. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I was stealing something from this house. I'm gonna look around and see, like, the surrounding area. Do I see anywhere that, like, strikes me as a particularly good path of flight away from this house? Like, if I were trying to get away in a stealthy manner, is there, like, a close-by, you know forested area or or a uh, covered area or somewhere that I think that a thief might try to make, uses their path basically to get away. Um, there's certainly no forested areas. You, this is right smack dab in the middle of farm field. And there's a couple of like, you know, trees, but there's no forested area. The Are there line any of crop areas that someone could uh, hide in, even some of the little size. Uh, barns. I mean, there are a couple of barns sort of on the outset. I mean, this is the this is the manor house, so most of the farming implements and barns and things 
are set quite a ways back from here. I mean, they're animal barns. They, you know that they have cows for milking here, they stated that. So they would keep those things farther away and so no try to avoid the smell. Right Not really. Okay. This, is, this is fairly open, and like a lot of farm houses and farm manors that you know, you've seen in the world. There's not a whole lot of good hiding place. Mm -hmm. There are some, like, rolling hills in this area, like much of this part of Glindring, but, I mean, you'd have to run a good long ways to, like, hide behind the rolling hills. Are so, there... Go ahead. Oh, I was just wondering, are there any, like, house pets? No, there are no house pets. Unfortunately... Do you want one? Because <laughs> we're in the market to uh, get, we get, a, a get a cat. We to We need a new home. <laughs> Sarah and the goblin can sing to you about adopting pets if you want. <laughs> in the arms of an Asimov. <laughs> I thought we'd escape it. I was nope. so... Couldn't even make it through wrong. one episode of the Sarah that I don't have, like, a pet dog or anything. Unfortunately, we did have a pet dog here on the property, but uh, slightly less than a year ago, where it passed away. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Probably because it's dog. Dogs are weak. <laughs> it was, uh, I believe, about 14 years old, mm -hmm. and was a great love of Master Reginald. He'd had it uh, since he was a uh, young lad, mm. and now uh, lost his companion. Now he was rather brokenhearted about it and hasn't had the strength to see another pet since. Well, if he ever wants a, uh, a somewhat house-trained tabaxi, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's welcome to this one. <laughs> So, I am... Is there something near me I can just knock over right now? Yeah. I mean, aren't you well, inside and having yourself some mead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I just one of those over. I feel like... <laughs> All right. Whoever... <laughs> if we're running on the theory that Philip spilled the beans about the rock, I'm guessing that he probably also had a house key and probably... It could have been roughed up and taken from him, or a copy been made, or something like that. Hmm. It is yeah, entirely think, plausible, yes. I think you're on the right track, Soria. As far as I can tell, it looks like the thief probably just came and went. They didn't. I don't think they really, you know, snuck in through a window or or hid too much. They would have just had to walk up and know where they were going and walk in and out, basically. It's, there's you, nowhere to hide around here. I agree, since most people are awake during the night and sleep when the sun is up, I believe that they would have gotten away in broad daylight. In that dead of day. Yeah. This town is just full of college students. <laughs> they wake all night and sleeping all day. Don't you hate college students, 70 and older crowd? <laughs> And under seven crowd. <laughs> Too cool they to just, play with you. They never call. And so we'll let you I will listen to Raffy. <laughs> so I will ask their phone to have the best games on it. <laughs> the best. I will they ask get the mad party. When you buy all the things on the microtransactions. <laughs> anyway, since there are still six hours of night. <laughs> Jesus. There are six hours of night remaining, and it is about to rain. Do we wish to proceed back to town for investigation now, or wait until daylight? No, I think we should go now while people are awake. Yeah, let's go talk to Sabine. See Didn't what they say, doing? like, the city people come out during the day? Yeah, but we have some people to ask during what, who would be awake now. Yeah. All right. All right. And then we can take another nap, and then we can look at the CD people in the day. Yeah, we'll look at them. <laughs> Just stare yeah. at them. Just stare at them. <laughs> <laughs> Nines, you're going to get, like, right up in front of them. And I'm a druid. I know seeds. That's true. <laughs> All right. Make it so. Execute. <laughs> Execute. <laughs> Is there anything else that I can help you all with before you are on your way? 
nothing. So unless anyone else says anything. No, you've been very helpful, Stefan. Suspiciously so. <laughs> She's just joking. I'm just joking. Oh, I'm not joking. <clears throat> Thank you very much for answering all our questions and helping us. And uh, hopefully you're able to bolster the security here now that we've shown you some of the areas of improvement. Like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Step uh, one, get security. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Soloth uh, emerges from the house, uh, holding uh, holding a portfolio uh, with the Tibok family crest on it. And, uh, have you all been able to make any uh, progress on your investigation here? Yes. We have determined that the thieves probably just simply walked in the front door and got away with it in broad daylight. And it MP. was probably someone roughly Ulthus size, maybe a little smaller, and uh, we, we, we suspect that they may have gotten the information one way or another from Philip. And they wore extremely uh, unique flat-toed shoes. Hmm. Yes. And this meat is delicious. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> so long, it kind of pops open a flask of his own and takes a swig. It is indeed. I can't say over mine coming up to Nordfeld. Best mead in the whole country. Um, I will take your word for it. Do you all require any of my assistance at this point? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that uh, we're, we're going to go talk to Sabine and then find the seedy people in town <laughs> and uh, see where it gets us. Yeah, we're I've going. heard that there's uh, some sort of thieves guild that's running in the area now. Some yes. big international thieves guild that operates we from Cormer. We have also heard that, yes. Why do you seem so weirded out by that, Droma? <laughs> Are you well, covering well, for them? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Is, is uh, Stefan still around? <laughs> uh, Stefan is nearby, but he's attending to the food in the main hall at this point. Uh... Well, tell so us all about probably, them on our way back to he's town. He's within earshot yeah. at the moment. Okay. Why, when, don't, why don't we head back to town? Are you going back to town too, Soloth? You can walk with us and, and we can talk. I have uh, a few more things around here to what, wrap up. The uh, Tibbulk family has actually... You know, well, they've asked us to engage in a more long-term uh, contract given the recent security breach. <laughs> so... Well, they are arranging for the Company of Blades to supply some, uh, well, hired protection and security for a while. I'm evaluating their estate, and Reginald is showing me around so I can see everything of value. Yeah, I will be here for some time yet, but um, if you need me, please leave a message with the steward, and I will reach out to you as soon as I can. Of course, you all have the Company rings, yes? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I won't say it. If I, if I miss your presence in the company house, I shall message you on the rings to alert you that I am there. So you're going Thank to you. get the list of all the valuable things in the house? Mm, no, that's not my job. Oh, okay. Just my job is sure. to appraise where they would be vulnerable. Well, it is someone else's job if they wish to catalog where all the valuables are. Well, since, it, since you're doing that, uh, I uh, I did take Stefan around and show him several of the vulnerable spots and where the person was looking into the windows and whatnot. So he, I've hmm. already given him some ideas. You may want to chat with him. And I think uh, Stefan's vulnerable spots are that he takes his job too seriously and doesn't really have a social life outside of it. It is a yeah, he's all too common trait among butlers. I yeah. Found. Not nearly the proletariat uh, <laughs> activist I was hoping he'd be. Yeah, he seems pretty, uh, you know, bougie. Yeah, pretty bougie. <laughs> like, he <laughs> hears the all this, right? Butler. <laughs> he hears all this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not that you can see it, but Stefan just sort of I feel, raises an eyebrow. <laughs> I feel like he always wanted a family, but he was too dedicated to work, and he is sort of all <laughs> wishing he had kids. I think that's a vulnerability that could be exploited. I mean, he, you didn't ask him if he had a family or anything. I'm very insightful. 
Sorry is just like writing her own fanfic. Yeah, we write like fanfic for all of the NPCs we run into. There's a lot of romance to be had between the butler master dynamic. I think it was maybe. Just get a little journal that says friend fiction on it. Sometime about four days ago, I think we said execute. Yeah, that we are walking back to town. Yeah. yeah. This Bye, is. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'll so see you all later. Uh, like I said, if you need me, leave a message for the steward. And then he kind of trots off in the direction of the barns, which are uh, fair. They're about a 20 yards off in the distance. So we're going to start heading back towards town. Um, and once we get out of earshot I'm gonna, of, the, of the house, I'm going to turn to the rest of the group as we're still walking. I'm going to say... So, uh, to answer your question, Soria, there's no Thieves Guild. That, I don't know what they're talking about. There are thieves, as we all know, but there's no Thieves Guild. It doesn't exist. Right. Wink, wink. No, no, seriously. This is something I think we need to look into, because I, that's why I was asking about who started the, the rumor or the information about the Thieves Guild. So we can silence think, them. They, no. <laughs> There's no, I'm being serious here. There's no thieves. I really, whatsoever. yeah, I, I know. I understand. I Wink. think they're maybe the person behind this, and they're trying to make it seem like there's some kind of cabal to uh, throw attention away from themselves. I can't believe they would drag the name of thieves through the mud for their own personal gain. I know, right? I'm glad you get it, Nine. Especially a noble organization like the Thieves Guild. There is no Thieves Guild. <laughs> right, so we'll meet the master of the Thieves Guild and make sure we knock this reporter out. Oh, my goodness. Look, I'm the master of the Thieves Guild. Oh, really? <laughs> Insight <laughs> check. <laughs> Need product inspiration on that? <laughs> Are you lying? Insight check guidance. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing it wasn't a good roll. Oh, uh, well, if I'm actually rolling, <laughs> that's it, up to you. It was a. My uh, insight's a dirty twenty. The I, 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 got, I rolled really badly and got a twenty-one. You, you're both pretty darn sure that Dromar is being very facetious about this and is not. <laughs> the guild master for the thieves guild however you're not a hundred percent convinced that there's no thieves guild <laughs> only because you both seem so dead set that there is a thieves guild no i, I, I believe it it's just messing with media. Them. we have to believe it <laughs> but it's not on the internet so. <laughs> yeah yeah there's no thieves guild I think that whoever is spreading the information about the Thieves Guild has something to do with this. But consider a business opportunity here. There's already word of a Thieves Guild, and if you were to make one, you would be Grandmaster. Yeah, I'm not interested in all uh, that. No, thank you. Okay. Are we there if there's yet? a Thieves Guild, <laughs> and you need to sell security advice... Why would there be a Guild of Thieves? Thieves try to keep a low profile. Being you in an would know, yes. Yeah, I do know. I'm a thief. I don't know if you know that, Oseth. I'm not really a security expert. That well, you have lots of low profiles, so we just assumed you were a thief. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That I is am. correct, Nines. <laughs> I steal things for a living. I'm a thief. <laughs> then where is the guild? There can is you, no guild. Can you say that again <laughs> in this lapel pin? <laughs> <laughs> The guild was an internet show starring Felicia Day. That's the only guild I know about, okay? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, Dromar, you are saying that there is some ruse behind this talk of Thieves' Guild. Yeah. So, I, I want to go, after we talk to Sabine, we need to go to the library. Support your local library. And uh, <laughs> we need to find the old newspaper and find out who wrote about the Thieves' Guild. All right, because we need to find out more, as much as we can about this supposed thieves guild and who's spreading this information, because they've got something to do with this, or they know who does. Sounds good. That's all I have to say about that. All right, so we, we all walk in silence back to the town hall. <laughs> 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 
complete silence. <laughs> really awkward and tense. With, with our hands at our sides, clenched fists. <laughs> Furtive glances at each other, like, mm -hmm. Wondering awkward. who is a thief and who isn't. Not too long after we leave the estate, it does start to trickle a little bit, and then... Oh no, trickle down. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Worst kind of economics! Somewhere around <laughs> the, the rain starts to come down a little bit, and then a little harder, and a little harder, and after not too very long, it's quite a significant downpour. And there's thunder, lightning, the wind is howling, and it's a real good thunderstorm that's rolling through here at the moment. Is there a watchtower around? Not that you're aware of. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll just put up my hood. Mm -hmm. As will I. Yes, we. I will too. You make your In way. Fact, I put shelter. up my hood. I put up my hood before it started raining really hard. You. I did not. <laughs> you continue to make your way down the road, and you come to a bridge that you did crossed already, that goes over a small but quickly flowing river, and. As you're about halfway across this bridge, a voice from behind you calls out, Looks like you've been causing a little trouble. Oh no, it's Little John. He wants to pull the trouble. <laughs> Eve's guild. <laughs> Dromar is known for little trouble. Yes, you must be speaking of Dromar. I will turn around. The smallest member of our group. Speaking. A little trouble. And I will yeah. draw my sword as I do so. I'm going to look around as well to see. I'm just going to check the whole area around us quick. Sorry is going to spin in a circle. Yeah, pirouette. <laughs> A perception pirouette. <laughs> I listen carefully for the direction of the voice. She's so dizzy, she sees nothing, and then she falls down. <laughs> Into the river. Um, <laughs> and drowns. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> no. New character. Next week on Lux and Dungeons. <laughs> Did you say End of story? <laughs> End of story. <laughs> Nicole will be playing a new character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, are, are you actually trying to make a perception check to see yeah. where this is going from? Were you doing the same drill, Mark? Yes. Okay. Guidance. Okay, I am also. Well, well, why don't everyone roll a perception check? Unless you really don't care. Oh, what the? Okay. <laughs> oh, God. This time, no, no uh, advantage. I just rolled the one die that I keep rolling. Another fucking nat 20. <laughs> I got a 30. We're going to have to ban that die. This Are you ridiculous. sure that die isn't weighted? This is ridiculous. I've, I've, so I've used, this die is fairly new, but I have used it before, and it has never done this. This is, uh -huh. this is 420s in a row on this die. <laughs> this is, this that's is crazy. Ridiculous. Wow, 420s. That's hey. 80. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when you're in the demo. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 guys, guys. We're going outside of our demographic. That's, that's a CBD cream for, for your aching it joints. It helps with your cataracts and glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> and your chronic pain. That Mary Jane. <laughs> I got a dirty 20. All right. Uh, I got a... Ridiculous number. Yeah, it's going to be a 27. What about nines? No, he's just aggravated that it's raining on him. Like, tails. I would be kind of pissed off about that, yeah. Like, tails flat, just like the hair is just over the eyes, because he didn't put the uh, his hood up. Does he have his ears kind of down? Oh, they're just weighted down from all the water. Yeah. And Ulseth? Ulseth apparently can see or hear nothing. <laughs> Five. That, that Ulseth checks out. Is like, you who are speaking, where are you? <laughs> Would you like me to do that? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Actually, yes. <clears throat> I'll wait for your perception check. Uh, so, Soria and Dromar turn around and see a smaller or a stockier figure um, standing kind of at the end of the bridge where it meets the road. and Behind us or ahead of us? Uh, behind you guys. And they are... You didn't have to pirouette all the way around. <laughs> they are <laughs> flanked on either side, but at a little bit of distance. It's uh, by two larger, more like, they're about six foot figures. 
And this is where the voice was coming from. Oh, Nines is the voice. <laughs> I hate the voice. <laughs> um, Not the TV no, show. Notice... No. No, I love that show. It's my favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> do, do I notice anything about any of their feet? <laughs> with your natural twenty, <laughs> even with a perception that high in a rainstorm, in a thunderstorm, like a severe thunderstorm at this distance across a bridge at night, no, you don't notice anything about these individuals' feet. Even Dromar, who has a special interest in feet, especially small feet, <laughs> where what? <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> getting very creepy. So I, I turn around and say, you who are speaking to us, we have caused no trouble. What is it that you want? Yeah. Identify yourselves also. No, I don't really think that's going to be uh, necessary. And uh, what we want is to make sure that you all go away, one way or another. From the bridge? Oh, we'll go away once we figure out what's going on here. Is this the Thieves Guild? <laughs> There's no Thieves Guild! <laughs> Are you members of the Thieves Guild? <laughs> oh my goodness! Why am I traveling with you people? We want well, to see your trust card. Your, you're a thief. <laughs> your membership card. <laughs> Well, I was told that I should be worried about you all. <laughs> Apparently not. Who told you? <laughs> None of your business. None of your business told you not to worry about us? I'm gonna... It's all really are dense, you know that? I'm just gonna <clears throat> run up and try to attack the guy who's talking. Okay. Um, well, that will set off combat. And we're going to wait till next week to run that. Oh. <laughs> Looking forward to it, though. Next week, we will open with a combat between you and this mysterious stranger who's come from the shadows to attack you all and take you by surprise at the uh, rather narrow river bridge that you're at now. So, everybody, oh. tune in next week at 2 p.m. Eastern time here on Twitch to catch that combat right out of the gate and we'll find out whether the Thieves Guild is actually real or not. <laughs> They're not real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks for we coming to our first show. Thank you for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed Everybody. it. Appreciate you being here. Bye. 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 Bye.